the art school live stream. This is going to be episode 147. And uh, we have a lot of art to check out today. A lot of good art to check out today. And uh, I'm excited. So let's do a little bit of an introduction as usual. Uh, for those of you that uh, that might be new. Okay, like I say, every week there's always a few few new people. Still today, I don't know if they're in the stream right now, but, uh, but welcome. And also for those of you watching this later on YouTube, in a few months from now, this is what we have on the menu today. So all of these, let's uh, let's go through them, through them all. So it's um, yeah, every stream, every every week kind of depends, but uh, but recently we've been hovering around the uh, seven, eight hour mark. So so yeah, I uh, I go through all of these in order that they are presented here, and well, actually this is the reverse order, but and I try my best to give feedback, and so. The, the kind of feedback that you can expect will be, you know, stuff that relates to the program, obviously. Uh, but it's, it's pretty open still. You know, you can submit your personal art, your uh, your assignments, of course. Um, questions, if you don't have any of the of the first two and you still want to submit something, that's always more than welcome. And uh, yeah, so as you can see, you know, as I'm going through these, uh, there's no there's no requirements for the the level of art to, to submit. Yeah, if you have something, just submit it. Don't be a chicken. I I always, I think, gentle in my in my feedback. I try to be at least because that's how I would like to receive it. Um, you know, when I started to uh, when I started to do art, when I started to work in the industry, I had never gotten well a little bit a little bit from you no know, from clients freelance, but uh, but mostly never really gotten. You know feedback on my art like no this is not good i don't want that but i want that direction instead and that kind of stuff uh so that was very new to me did not enjoy it at first and so i know how it is and so yeah i don't want to uh don't want to make anybody like anxious or uncomfortable about about the feedback here so i try my best to to ease it in you know but of course if you have like different different uh preferences for your feedback you can very well let me know so if you don't want any fluff like if you don't want to hear anything positive about it for some reason um i can i can do that too but um yeah you let me know and if you're if it's your first time too uh usually i'll ask that you um give me like a little bit of an introduction about your uh, your goals your your what you want to do with your art why are you in a program in the first place is it more of a like a hobby that you're taking seriously that you want to level up just just for fun because it's you like it or is it something that you want to take to a professional level eventually uh whatever it is the more precise the goal the better so that i can give you you know feedback that is relevant towards that i i, I follow students for a year at least and so there's a lot of a lot of opportunities to you know to correct or to steer the ship in the right direction if it ever goes a little off and so so yeah let me know you know that's that's super important how i'm gonna give the feedback depends a lot on your goals so so, so 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 number one here Preston. i hope these are in order i i didn't have any option to order them at all now so every every week on facebook it's a little bit different it's like they they roll the dice and then it's a new set of new set of uh just uis <laughs> it's almost like they have a bunch of uis and it's random every time anyways enough chat enough chat Get to it. Starting with Preston. Hope you're ready. <laughs> this week, I got hit with an. <laughs> Ooh, I got uh, got nervous real quick here. Got hit with a car. <laughs> Good thing it's just an art block. But I hope your week went well. I tried to start creating character concepts, but I was having a tough time actually coming up with ideas, bringing them up to paper. And so I first attempted with a female character. I wanted to convey personality through her pose, but it made Excuse me, it made her um, awkward looking. I was having difficulty translating her into an actual character, so I moved on to male character. I think he turned out better. I was inspired by Zeus. Zeus, 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 Zeus. Typ <laughs> Typically, archers have quivers filled with arrows. Uh, I thought it'd be an interesting concept to have a character, to have a giant quiver filled with spears instead. Hmm. Imagine a warrior that would, uh, that would throw lighting infused spears. Spears. Um, for this reason, I tried to incorporate Spartan-esque armor with a mix of hunter-like clothing for his design. And yeah, if you if you see me like fumble over my words and and just be awful at reading, it's because I suck at English. That's just how it is. It's not my native language. I've only been here for 
13 years. <laughs> what do you gotta do? <clears throat> Um, so do you have any general tips for designing characters? What can I do to push mine further? What is your process when designing character? How concrete of an idea do you start with as always? Thanks for the advice. All right. All right, all right, all right. Well, so one thing about, uh, about your design right away that I want to point out, it's that whenever the, um, the quiver is too long, like whenever you have a, uh, what is it? How do you call it for, uh, for sword? Like a sheath? No. Is that it? Uh, the the sword holder. See what I mean? Um, it's uh, it's always a little tricky when the sword is too long because then you can't you can't get it out. <laughs> so you'll you'll go like this, and then and then your arms are like this, and it's still in. Like the tip is still in. So that's the only issue that I would have with this one here. It's like when he starts to like pull it out, where does it go? Like does he lean it? down here and like go like this choo, 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 and then you can throw it or, um, or maybe it just grabs the tip and then flinging uh, flicks it in the air and then crab grabs it and then throws it maybe you know it's just uh it always makes me a little uncomfortable when i see when i see like quivers or um uh or, or sword scabbard there you go thank you <laughs> thanks curtis uh, <laughs> um when you see a scabbard that's that's too long because then that's the first thing that comes to mind, but, um, but I like the idea though, like maybe it would be, maybe it could be instead, um, instead of like fully enclosed, like all the way down to the bottom, maybe it could be just a, like a wrap around it, you know, like, a mm, like you have all your spears here. Oops. All your spears and maybe it's just like a, something like this, like a little little wrappy thing that's that's attached to a to belt so that I can you can hang it around like this but instead it's yeah maybe a little bit more loose I don't know maybe that doesn't work also like they would just slide out mm. or maybe they maybe their their shape is uh, maybe there's like a little bit of a like a little bit of a, a handle here to make it easier to grab or something then that would prevent them from sliding down. I don't know. Uh, not that big of a deal. It's just it it does look like a giant quiver, like a, just a, like a regular one that you scaled up. Maybe a better design. Like I like the idea a lot. You know, it's super cool to have a bunch of spears that you're carrying. But I feel like that might be a better idea to carry them. Maybe they are like hanging like this. No, not not super practical. Mm, these are long arrows, though. Um, anyways, uh, some, something to think about, maybe? It still looks cool. It's just, like, maybe it's just me also that's like, mm, how does he get this out? Maybe most people wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't care. I don't know. Um, so you try, trying to convey personality through the pose. But it made her, made her awkward look. I, I don't think it's because of that necessarily i think it's just her pose that's a little stiff you know so i think it could totally work like that face that face works that that face conveys conveys some emotion she's not like just neutral you know like dead face she's actually you know she's like mm. there's there's a hint of an emotion in there and so yeah i think it's just the the pose maybe that's that's not conveying that too well i don't think it's the the pose that's making out i don't think it's the the emotion that's making it out um I don't think it's her personality that's making it awkward. So maybe if she she was resting on one of her hips, you know, maybe she's resting on that one. Kind of like uh, in a stance that suggests that she's not gonna move. Like, hmm, what are we gonna do about this? Kind of like that. Uh, And then maybe that arm is a little bit more raised. Maybe that one's a little, a little lower. Maybe she's arching her back a little bit more. Like popping her chest, like she's, she's above you. Like, what? what is this? But yeah, I think it's just, that's gonna be mostly gesture. Um, Cause, um, cause yeah, I mean, 
what you're trying to do here would totally work. It's just, uh, it's, it's just stiff a little bit, you know, that's it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Sassy. Sassy pose. Also, the, the hand gesture will, will play a big part. Like her hand right now, maybe a little a little too big for her. And also maybe like it's when you when you gesture like this, you know, it's like the hand right now doesn't have like it's not conveying much. The hands can convey a lot of uh, they can communicate a lot, a lot of emotion, a lot of uh, feelings. And so maybe, yeah, maybe it's just the way that you that you position it. Maybe she's like like this, you know, like what the hell? Or maybe she's uh, I don't know what else she could be doing, but yeah like curving the curving the wrist the wrist a little bit more maybe what because right now it's like all stiff you know but usually like if you if you gesture the this is going to move a little bit that the wrist is gonna it's not gonna be locked in place and and that again adds a lot of gesture so yeah i think it's just just loosening her loosening her up a little bit and uh, as usual, you know, like make sure that you use uh, that you use references for that stuff, for that kind of stuff. If you're, uh, you know, if your pose is not, if you don't, if you don't like your pose, uh, and you can't figure it out, you can't figure out why on your own. Just uh, just look at other poses that that you think work that maybe convey the kind of emotion that you want to uh, to convey, and uh, and study that. You know, try to try to go for that. And then the next time that you think about a pose that want that you want to convey, uh, a pose where you want to convey that kind of uh, that kind of emotion then you'll have that visual library now because you looked at a reference and you're like, ah, oh, that's how you do it. And now you know how to do it. But yeah, that guy looks good. Looks nice, nice and it's like a strong pose. I mean, they're both they're both pretty good, like good proportions in general. Um, it's just like the little hints uh, or hits of anatomy that, uh, that you have all around. It works quite well, like the, sh the way the shoulders end, like it's pretty good, it's pretty damn good. That construction is very nice, very very nice. Yeah, like for for the pose, especially for the man, uh, for the the male, uh, a lot of it will be in the feet, how like how planted on the ground they are, and that really that's going to uh, communicate a lot of um, weight. So how heavy he is, you know. Right now, I feel like he's he's pretty light, maybe uh, maybe a little too floaty, but if you really if you really drew like the the feet like properly planted on the ground like maybe this heel is a little too low right now I'm just raising that a little bit and like really grounding the feet i think that that's going to help the stance also quite a bit she doesn't have that same problem because she's um she's pretty much laying flat you know on the uh, on the ground there's not much perspective here going on so less of an issue but um yeah to answer your question general tip for designing characters I sure as heck do. So I don't know if you had to look at the um, the character design class. That would be the the way, the way to go. That's where I I give you all the tips. Um, but really quickly, uh, kind of the stuff that I think about when when I design my characters. And since you're asking, you know what, like how much ahead I think about about the design. Um, it depends. I think that's the same for for most people. But uh, but sometimes my idea will be will be pretty clear like um it'll be kind of a uh the, the result of it maybe like a couple of days of just thinking about it just randomly like, oh that'd be cool to add to this character and you have kind of like a rough idea of the character and if i don't have time to just sit down and draw it then i'll keep thinking about it and then the more i think about it the more the more concrete it becomes um and other times i just i just go right into it i start with a pose i mean often actually i'll do that probably more often than than the first the first way uh, but usually i'll just start with a either a study or a sketch um an anime sketch or yeah just like a character pose like a you know the kind of stuff that i, that I draw for youtube and that's going to be the spark for the design so if i have you know if i draw a pose that i'm like mm, i could see this go turning into something else or if i get inspired by something then i'll keep working on it um so I'd say that's usually how how it's gonna go. Let me open the window. Ugh, it's super hot. Ugh. Burp. 
birds chirping away. I hope that's not too loud. Um, but yeah, Tonda helps. Um, moving on to the next one here by Alessandro. Uh, sorry, one more thing I forgot. Um, tips to uh, to design characters. Think of a uh, always go for extremes. You know something that you think is extreme. So let's say you want to go for a, yeah for Zeus inspired character, uh, Zeus god of god of thunder. Uh, so a lot of a lot of lighting um, symbols. You know any 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 chance that you get to in to include those um, those kind of sh kinds of shapes, so you know that kind of stuff uh, in in any part of the design. So that might be something here to do with the knee pads. Maybe it's um, how the the stitching is uh, is laid out, not the stitching, but how the um, the laces are if if he has any, but how his laces are laid out. Maybe it's not a straight line. Maybe it's like like that. Um, the stitching of you know of these things here. Maybe it's also this kind of pattern. Uh, uh, um, could be like yeah, the armor might be shaped like I don't know, like half of this, or maybe maybe you can focus on like long triangles. That could be your, your shape language because that's that's that will remind us of a uh, of of that shape maybe a little bit. Um, and then yeah, and then uh, inspiring yourself from from nature always super useful from from different animals. Um, from different insects, from dinosaurs, you know, anything that that you think looks cool and that you can get inspired from, pull pull different uh, different characteristics from, and then slap them onto your design. Essentially, for a good design, you want something that um, that people get what it's about. That's the whole point of design to communicate an idea. And so, if your guy is meant to be to be strong, to be uh, like a fighter that fights with lighting like all these like anything lighting related anything that that conveys that you're strong that conveys strength um all those things are good to add to your design so check out that class if you haven't because uh, that's you know just a limit to how much i can say here uh where i take hours to do the same thing in uh, in the design class so have a look at that if you haven't already and uh, yeah moving on what the hell's <clears throat> Alessandro. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So I hope you are doing well. <laughs> I am. So this week I started to do a Magic the Gathering card. Any comments on anatomy, character design, and colors are really needed. It's uh, and it's it's in its early stages of painting. Also, I don't know if you ever played Magic. Uh, hell yeah. Um, but this card will be a five colors card. Red for obvious dragon stuff and pure violence. Black for the fear he provokes on every other living form. White because of the incarnation of that deity. And green because of natural strength. Blue for his controlling mindset. I'm a nerd. Of course I play magic. Come on, bro. I want the five colors to be present by the concept at least um, on my painting. On the creature itself or on the background. Whew, okay. Um, that's a lot. That's a lot of stuff. Is there a card like that? That has everything? That's all the colors? But uh, yeah, I mean, so far so good. Look at this guy. Quite the badass. I suppose, good reference for it. You got your anatomy reference here for dragon. <laughs> very, very realistic. Clearly from a real dragon. That's a super fun progress to, uh, process too. If you want to, uh, not process, but a super fun uh, exercise to do. To to take, like it, it works with anything really, but uh, like cartoon characters and try to make, to give them like believable, like realistic anatomy. Uh, or dragons, like creatures, like mythical creatures that don't exist, that have multiple arms, and trying to sort all of this out. Like when you get when you get when you get good at anatomy, or when you have like a good decent base in anatomy, that's super fun to try. Uh, anyways, um, a 
that's good. That's pretty cool painting. Mm. All right, so. Man, I don't know how. <laughs> oh, that's a tricky one. I don't know that I'll be able to help. How to include five. Mm -mm -mm. Cause a lot of the, like what's tricky with this is like a lot of the time the the art for the creatures don't like you you need the card color to to really understand what the creature type is you know like what color it is uh otherwise it, just looking at the art you might not be able to tell and so so that's why it's tricky here uh because you don't you don't have that that information for the card you don't have the, the the layout of the card to indicate what what type this is and so now it's it's all on you it has to be through the design and like a lot of like the red cards, you know, don't necessarily, it's not always like a red character. So like the color of the card doesn't really uh, indicate the the color of the art. Uh. <laughs> Super cool idea though. Um, man, I just have no idea how to tackle this. Like you, my diff, like the 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 one thing that I think would first come to mind would be to to have a lot of effects in there. So character type, you know, maybe it's like a. Uh, I would I would use probably like the the because forest and dragon those two don't really go together. So maybe the the forest would be kind of part of the background. I w I don't think I would I would have anything foresty on the uh, on the design itself <clears throat> so maybe maybe like yeah like kind of like a red dragon so that's the red is kind of you know handled there uh green background in the foreground yeah maybe you can have like planes in the back too because like white characters that are holy yeah maybe it's a little easier to mix with red like red and white Maybe like red dragon skin with like white, shiny, like golden, maybe a little like golden accent armor. And then the, it's just this guy, when you go black, like, uh, what the hell do you do with that? Maybe that could be the effects. And then the water too, maybe that could be effects. Like water. Bro, I don't know. Mm. But anyways, uh, so idea aside, you know what? It's a really cool idea. I just... I'm not sure how you would make that work. That's your job. Uh, I will comment on what I see here, though. Um, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. There you go, there you go. I know that's... The, uh, maybe it could be for the, for like the, 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 the black part, the black, the black color, maybe that could be his wings, like like skeleton wings kind of thing you know maybe like all of that stuff is all ruined and it's just like flying with magic kind of like um, in world of warcraft you know the skeleton dragon what's his name whatever it doesn't matter but uh but anyway so about this good uh, good balance so far good uh great anatomy good proportions um Like the wings, I think is probably the weakest point of the of the whole thing, of the whole piece. Let's um, let's bring up some some bat wings to see their proportions. There we go. So 
So I would play maybe a little bit more with uh, with the shape, with the silhouette, and how you how you place like your bones here. You know, so you have. You have this going on here, so not quite like what you had here, um, and then splitting in this case what four fingers. Is that right? Um, and you know, kind of the silhouette is a little different too, so a little thicker here at the first um, the first finger, and then the the fingers get longer, but the wings get gets uh narrower just because they're they're going towards the outside instead of adding to the width of the wing um so i think the shape could be could be better here more anatomically correct but yeah i mean other, other than that big part of this will be We'll, we'll come in with the lighting and the effects and all that stuff. Um, so far, I really like it. You know, it works works quite well. Yeah. Cinder goes there. There you go. Thank. <laughs> Would you believe I've I've worked at Blizzard for almost eight years? Uh, and I would try to have maybe like a. A backlight on here a little bit so that you can have a lot of like the glow of the wing like the same ideas um, as when you have you know a really bright light source behind your behind your head and how it goes like through the cartilage of or through the the the, the, the thin layer of skin and cartilage that you have in your ears and then it glows red you know that's that's always kind of nice because um, right now the wings do stand out quite a bit you know they're, they're this big mass against a white background so maybe having like doing anything to brighten them up a little bit might be nice and it would look quite dramatic yeah i don't know i feel like i'm going in circle i don't know if that helps alessandro let me know and uh, yeah, don't hesitate to, to let me know if it, it didn't at all try it. i'll try again next time julia Thanks for the balloon. Um, I am doing great. Hope you're well as well. So thank, uh, I, I tried to cast some moonlight on my three point perspective practice. Not quite happy with it. Looks flat, although I used a lot of soft and hard lighting. Any feedback is welcome. Mm. Yes, lighting. My favorite. Mm. Well, um, at first glance, it clearly looks like a like a night scene, a nice little shine from the moon. So how could we improve this? Hmm. I would say probably the the biggest uh, impact would be to uh, to define your shadows better, so that they are kind of all the same color like the same value because right now you have a couple of things that are in, sh in, uh, in the shadows but they are they're not as dark as as this for example like this receives no no light from the moon but then again on the inside here probably not also you know like that would probably be almost as dark um maybe on the inside here don't receive anything either it's just like i feel like the the way a good way to think about it would be to you just have like two different colors that you can use like two different values that you can use light or no light um so when you don't have any light i mean there's always going to be a little bit a little bit of bounce lights but um whatever your shadow color is you know that that should be it almost everywhere so i see how dark this is and then how light this is in comparison same thing here you know like that's that's quite light See, it looks like the light is coming from this side. And so, um, 
if this is lit you know the opposite side here would be in the shadows so all of that would probably be in the shade probably casting a little bit of shadow as well on the ground and that side of the pillar would be all in the shadows same thing with that side here so which i think oh i did i didn't get that right did i seems like the light's coming from the other side so yeah i got i got confused because of these here okay so the light's coming from this side instead right so so then this side here that's all in the shadows yes 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 that's all good uh, but you know however dark this is it would be as dark here too because that's against the light against the light source um so that's kind of what i mean like everything that's against the shadow uh, against not against but everything that's facing away from the light would all be the same darkness and overall what would happen in here is everything would be quite a lot darker uh, so the little this little thing here will probably cast shadow a little further down because the moon is right up in the sky it's almost like a like a noon you know noon noon lighting lighting situation Um, and then, and then, yeah, so it's a little bit here. Um, yeah, so, okay, maybe that, maybe that one too here. So, yeah, just reinforcing your shadows, I think it's going to make a big difference. Um, I like the, the, the color that you use for the, the, the light source, that's perfect. You know, it clearly feels like it's at night. Um, and then once you do a pass like this, uh, you know, kind of just solidifying the shadows everywhere, making sure that everything is around more or less the same, the same value. Like these two should not be the same exactly. You know, on the inside here, we're probably going to get a little bit less lights just because it's harder to access. We would need to bounce a lot more to reach this part, but at least, you know, a little darker on this side. It should be, it should be pretty, pretty close. Um, yeah. And oh. Here as well. I forgot that would cast shadow too. Like this little this little ramp. And then maybe maybe a little bit of a a glow to brighten this up because now it's starting to get a little dark. Whoa. Nope. Not like that. A little bit of a atmospheric perspective although at night you know that that effect's not super strong but but what who cares about that <laughs> we can cheat we're artists we can do anything we want yeah so i really like the julia so it's just it's really just the shadows i think and uh in this case since it's the moon you know the moon's gonna be the light source it's a it's a light source that's pretty far away so all your shadows are going to be pretty crisp. There's not going to be a whole lot of fuzziness to them. Um, you would have fuzziness for a light source that's a lot smaller, a lot closer to the subject. But for anything that's coming from from space, um, it's going to be pretty damn sharp. So hope that helps. And moving on to Luisa. Later, Maria. Oh, I've probably gone already. <laughs> Six minutes late. Oops. So, let's check this out. So, my assignment for the rest of things I mentioned in Photoshop for Digital Artists 2. I have used the pen tool. Shit. Hmm? The rest of things mentioned. All right. So, I have used the pen tool, shapes, layer style, graded maps, and I also tried to do an illustration. I had in mind a loading screen for a 2D game, 2D game for children called find a cat. I am not happy with the final results and I'm not sure what bothers me. Maybe it's because of the direction of light and cast shadow or maybe the color palette. Maybe because my skills are not high enough. I wanted to keep it simple, but at the same time, produce something colorful and nice to look at. Well, let's check it out. Oh, that's very easy to, very easy to fix. Cause it's a really good base. Uh, 
Yeah, I love the sun coming coming from this uh, the window here. To be honest, I feel like probably the table is just a little too uh, not the table the uh, the background's a little too bright, especially for, to have like light against it. You know, it's always the same idea as uh, when you take a photo of somebody against like a sunset or something like against the sun, the person's always going to be a little darker because um, the camera has to adjust the amount of light that comes in because the background's so bright, and so it darkens everything, including the the subject. Um, in this case, that would be the wall. So. Um, yeah, like if you if you make that difference a little bit more, <laughs> it's so noisy outside. What the hell? Jesus. Um, so if you adjust the contrast maybe between those two, so make the the floor a little bit brighter, because that's going to be receiving the light source, uh, the, the 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 light directly, right from the window, straight from the sun itself. Um, and then the wall here is only going to be received bounce light, so that's. That would be the only thing that that brightens it up. God damn it! Shut, shut it. <clears throat> so let's try that real quick. See if we can quickly, with just a little bit of a value adjust, make that pop some more. Is it like a, whoa, woo? Is it like a chase or something? Hot pursuit. Hope they catch him. Uh, let's just take that color, darken it a little bit. Darken this one out, though it could probably be a little, a little more saturated. ground mm. Let's try to do that selection quickly so it won't be the best <laughs> but all right and then you have um, light coming in from from the back here so your shadow is probably going to be coming towards us as well you know if the light's coming towards us the shadow is going to go in the same direction so they wouldn't quite go from this um, to the left here, you know. Details a little bit, a little bit more advanced. Like we we see that stuff further in the program. So no worries at all. Just just wanted to mention it. Might as well. Mm. Yeah. So let's add some light in here. Some extra light overlay maybe. Mm. A hard light. So too dark. That's better. So yeah. So. Then this whole thing here would be casting shadow on the ground, so you would only see, you know, like this wall here is blocking some of the light from entering the room. So maybe the light would come, would start back there. If it's, if it's like a noon light, so when the sun is really high in the sky. All uh, right. So let's say the window casts at a slight angle here. The shadows for the legs, and then the, the table itself would probably probably be blocking most of that light here. Not much remains of the lights, um, so maybe let's change the direction. Um, the table maybe would start a little further back here. It's like this, like the, anyways, um, tricky one to light. Uh, so like real lighting probably wouldn't work that well now that I've tried it. Um, 
just because of the the angle of the light and like the we can't see the t the top of the table so we there we wouldn't be able to add light on top that would look kind of weird um so maybe instead uh let's not have any any light or any cast shadow or anything like that maybe it's just just make the whole whole thing here a little brighter the floor is not too dark maybe it gets a little brighter coming towards us here so this is not like realistic lighting but but what else sometimes you gotta cheat to make it pretty um and then yeah maybe a little bit of extra glow around the window to warm things up light is always nice because of the the warmth that it brings so yeah, just a little bit of glow here. Cozy up the place. And then towards the bottom of the wall here, a little bit less light maybe. You know, light always gets trapped in the corners. When you have a corner, you can always make some of that light. lose some of that light but anyways that's not really the point of this exercise you know it's not to create like a beautiful scene um it's to to learn the controls to learn the different tools that you have in photoshop um so so yeah just overall just adding a little bit of a like tweaking the light a little bit tweaking the values mostly and just adding a little bit of glow usually helps kind of just unify everything make it make everything kind of work together um Technically speaking, I think he did a good job. Um, maybe this this sign here, mm, like the colors, you know, the fact that it shares some of the same colors as the uh, the carpet, maybe not that good of a choice because then, it, like, it's almost it, it makes it hard to see. It kind of blends into the carpet. So if you want the title to really stand out, I think I would make it a color, if anything, uh, opposite to the the background that it's against. So maybe continuous, contiguous. Ah, come on. Ah, this is gonna take all day, huh? good enough you know like if if the sign was just white now it stands out a lot you can read it from a from a distance um it could also be just all black and then white letters uh, but usually when you have something that's written something that you want people to to be able to read uh always make that the always make that stand out a lot and look at it from a distance if it's if it's visible from a distance then it's good um because without that, you know, it's it's hard to see where that where that begins. And like the darkness of the orange here against the black, maybe not enough contrast. So that's what I would recommend for that. Just presentation wise. Mm. Yeah, that could be the text though. Like you could match the text to the, the, the color palette. So instead of keeping it black, uh, that could be all... Uh, Maybe it could be a gradient text. So maybe that's orange. Bolder orange. Maybe red. Uh, maybe that color here. Or maybe some of the letters different color. Um, it's almost like as, as soon as you have a background against it, um, that's that makes the, st the text stand out you can almost do whatever you want and it doesn't need to be black um so also another thing that you could do is you can have the text just be transparent so it's only it's all negative space you know so you you show the carpet through the text almost okay okay like that line back here and continue there the brown there almost like a yeah it's kind of like a holes in the panel 
that could that could that could work too. And um, and just for the placement of the text as well, like I would uh, adjust that so that it's a little bit more centered. Like we usually try to avoid having things that are too close to the canvas. Um, and to have the important objects, important components of the uh, of the illustration too far away from one another within that canvas. And so right now you have like all the space here in the center, you know, that's kind of empty. There's not a whole lot, a whole lot there. So I personally would uh, would probably would probably push that up a bit more. Maybe make it bigger. Just so that it's not too far from the too close to the, to the edge here and like it doesn't fit. Yeah, maybe not that much, maybe just a little bit. Maybe just a little bit higher would be enough. Yeah, like there's I would also put something back here, you know, whatever it is. Maybe it's just crown molding on the wall, maybe that'd be enough. crown molding or what's the bottom one? Is, this, is there a different name for it? Um, maybe something here. I don't know what you could have here. Maybe like a, a plant by or like a vase maybe. Um, just to to fill up the space here because the eye is going to travel from from this, you know, this, this, uh, this, these flowers to the title here. And those are the two main uh, attractions and you know in the paint in the uh, in the illustration here and in between like the the travel part is a little boring you know there's nothing here it's like nothing to see on your way there and so usually I would recommend yeah that you put a bunch of stuff there maybe like a stool back here or chair somewhere um, yeah but that's that's more advanced composition stuff you know again there's a class for that much later in the program so don't you know take that with a grain, grain of sand Grain of sand, grain of salt. <laughs> um, for the purpose of the exercise, very well done. So moving on to scaling. I did have a good week, Gilly. Thank you very much. Hope you did as well. So um, after last week's feedback, I changed the sketch from uh, for my treat woman piece. I made changes to the chest area as it as you suggested last week. I also made some um, some of the roots bigger and added some smaller ones to make them more diverse. Mm -hmm. Looks good. Um, also, I did some more work rendering the piece, but because of my busy work schedule this week, I didn't get to do much more than what you see here. Um, and I found a time to make a start for turn two, starting with Anatomy 1. Any feedback on this week's work will be highly appreciated. Got it. shape in the a uh, little bit more anatomically correct makes a big difference that's way better it reads a lot more like a person now very nice mm, for the roots i would still push it maybe a little bit more almost treating it like um like legs and then fingers you know, um, and toes, you know, so the leg is going to be like this big chunk and then branches out into smaller, smaller segments, smaller sections. So maybe like, uh, maybe this one right here is a lot bigger. Use like two big ones or three big ones, whatever. Without having to change any of the other ones, maybe, maybe you could get away with 
Just adding those. Because it, it is better, but um, I don't feel the thickness is enough. Like he changed it maybe by 10%, 15%, 20%. I think it would have needed in some cases here like to like double the width of some of these. Um, but the most important really is um, from start to finish, you know, like from the base to the tip, really having that thing um, tapered down. So like from here, if you start this big, this wide, start real, real thick, and then as it makes its way to the to the tip, it gets smaller and smaller, maybe branches out into a bunch of smaller ones. But have that, uh, have that very, very clear. Like a tree, you know, like the trees, um, like the tree roots at the base of the tree, they're gonna be like real, real chunky, chunky, chunky roots. And then they become very, very small and very delicate at the at the ends, at the ends. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, maybe a little bit more of that. And like you could also vary the the length of some of these. Like maybe the thick ones, the big ones here, they they creep in a little closer to us. Maybe like coming towards us some more. Not all of them, but maybe some it would be cool to have them uh, be a little longer. So instead of having kind of this um, this uh, this like curly curly head full of hair, <laughs> this head full of curly hair, I said that all all messed up. Um, but instead, yeah, instead of having like all these curls in the in the roots, it's more like a more like a uh, like a straight perm, right? So the hair is kind of like nice and clean here, and then it turns into like these smaller smaller locks. But it's more it's more grad gradual instead of being so short over such a short short distance. See, so, yeah. I would change that definitely. Um, it's for sure step in the right direction, but I think yeah, I think it's just not pushed enough. Uh, they still read mostly as being the same the same size, but. Uh, But all the yeses for, for this, though. Very nice. Um, awesome. So started, started uh, term two, anatomy one. Right on. Let's see here, you have your constructions. Your, your spheres are very good. I'm um, looking mostly at uh, like the center line here. So, and if you're not sure, you know, if you're not sure that your construction is solid, uh, one thing that you can do is when you when you split them up, always making sure that you like continue the line here. Like if, if this is the symmetry line, like the half cut in half, make sure that it continues, and that you can wrap it up on the other side as well. And when you do it well, <laughs> you don't rush like I'm doing right now. Like both sides here should be the same distance. They're not right now, but they should. Uh, and then that's when you'll know that's that's a good ellipse. Ellipse, not ellipse. Ellipse, ellipse. Nailed it. Because yeah, because these lines here are very important. Making sure that they're always. Parallel, always going in the right direction. Uh, but yeah, as far as I can see here, it seems pretty damn good. So I'm happy to see that you put some emphasis on that. Um, some of these, I think the uh, the jaw is going to be maybe a little too too wide and then not long enough. And it's going to be mostly just because of the chin, you know, like your chin has no has no width to it, and that's going to impact a little bit the, uh, the side here of the jaw, like this, the uh, the contour of the mandible. So 
by, you know, by just giving the chin a little bit of a width here. Although now yeah, that one, that one's fine, but this one maybe looks a little bit too, too, too roundy, too bald like, and I think I might just leave it because of this here. If I make that wider, then the curve here is going to start a little different. The angle is not going to be quite the same. So like when you um, when you ch when you chop these uh, these bits here from the sphere, like now this is flat, right? So it's no longer a sphere, it's no longer rounded. So seen from the front, it would look more like you know instead of a circle, that would look more like something like this that's been chopped off. It's more rectangular, and so when you add the chin to that, it makes it quite a bit longer. But uh, if you didn't chop that, you know if you're if you're um, the size of the heads here was still present, then would make the head feel a lot more round. So, uh, yeah, one thing to keep in mind is this thing here. Like when you chop it off, you really chop it off. So maybe this one here is not enough. And it's very subtle, you know, it's, uh, that's why this is such an important step, um, to, to get right. Because if, if there's any, anything a little bit off here, like the, it's just going to translate to the rest of the head too. And, uh, it'll be very hard to save, but if that looks good, like I didn't change much, but now it feels, feels pretty solid. Um, then more likely than not, your head's going to look nice when you add the features on top your foundation is solid. But uh, yeah, so since you, um, seeing as you just started, these are very good, very good. Nice quality to your line too, nice and clean. It's not easy to draw all these, these, these lines like as clean as you did. So really good job. Yeah, just be uh, just be a little more careful about the length of your heads. You know, make sure that they have enough en enough uh, verticality to them. And if you find yourself having like a head that looks more like a sphere, like this one here, still, um, then yeah, widen the jaw maybe a little bit more. Uh, not the jaw, widen the chin a bit more, um, so that the direction here, that line here, is going to be slightly like oriented slightly different and uh, make sure that you shave off some of the sides of the heads. So here you can shave off some of that as well. You could bring that in a little closer since now that part has been shaved off. And now like all of a sudden you're left with a head that's a lot more accurate and it's very little, very little changes. So that was very good stuff. Moving on to... Um, Fouad was saying something about um, the uh, the collarbone. Yeah, I kind of agree. Um, I wasn't going to say anything because you know if this is going to be shaded like a tree, probably we won't see we won't see too much. Um, like the shading would kind of would, would kind of blur all these uh, these smaller issues. But you're right. You know, like uh, if the arm is raised. Or, the, the, the elbow, not the, if the, if the arm is raised, that was right. And the shoulder is, right, is, is lifted too, um, the collarbone follows. So when collarbone, let's say it's right here, unless the pen is laying right on top. As it goes up, you know, you can see the change of direction here. So it does follow the shoulder. And so that line here wouldn't be the same on both sides. That one would be a little bit higher and the shoulder would be higher as well. I think I mentioned that last week, but, uh, but when you lift, when you lift your arm, um, when you lift your arm, your, your shoulder almost touches your, your ear. So if it doesn't, then it's probably because the shoulder is not in the right spot quite. So you can just lift all of that. There you go. Yep, 
No, this is a, this is a good uh, good point for that. Thanks for that. All right, so Constantin. All right, so I forgot to add all this dream and goals to work at Riot, and I really love to I would really love to design skins and new champion. Right on. So work at Riot as a concept artist. Character concept artist. So if concept art is what you're interested in, then um, don't focus so much on illustrations. <laughs> so this is definitely more of an illustration. Beautifully done, by the way, but um, um, like that would definitely not serve you uh, if you put that in your portfolio and you were applying for a concept art position. So just something to keep in mind for the future. You know, if that's if that's the goal, if you want to design skins, if, uh, if you want to, to be uh, designing, like creating new champions, that kind of stuff, do that. Just fill your portfolio with a bunch of stuff like that. So a bunch of different skin, different, uh, um, yeah, League of Legends inspired, um, you know, heroes, characters, whatever. Uh, some of the monsters, maybe. And and that's what you should be focusing on if if that's the goal, you know. Uh, working on other stuff, of course, we do it for fun, but um, it's just, it's not contributing to, to your goal. And so my, my logic is always, you know, hit the brakes on all of that stuff that's not contributing to your goal directly. And you can always do that later when you achieve your goal. That's kind of what I did in a way. Um, you know, I always wanted to... Well, not, I'm not a good example because I didn't, I didn't apply, but... Um, it's a lot, it makes a lot more sense to me at least to Focus 100% of your efforts to achieve to achieve your goal, and and to get to land that job, and and kind of delayed like delayed gratification for all the rest that you all the all the other stuff that you want to do like uh you know when I was uh, when I was younger I always wanted to to make comics I always wanted to uh, to draw my own comics that kind of stuff I wanted to um, maybe focus a little bit more on environments but I I delayed all of that until I got a job and then once you got the job. Money's flowing in. You're like, ah, good. Now you can start to not. Yeah, now you can start to explore a little bit more because you'll be doing a lot more of that anyways at work. And so when you get home, then it's free. You know, it's your personal time. All the stuff that you really want to do, now you can do it. And you know that uh, that you can do it safely. You can do it. Uh, you know, without worrying about is that a good time investment if I want to land a job eventually? Because you have, you have the job already. So that's my logic here. Uh, yeah, anyways, um, so this is what I've been working on this week so far. Didn't have a lot of free time, so I'm sending you the portrait and I'm finished. The hair looks to me, uh, took me forever to do, and I'm super happy with the result. The idea is based on all the symbols Australia is known, known for, such as the Sydney Opera House, Opera House, and which I recreated as a crown. Green eyes and gold hair are the national colors, and of course the koala kangaroos and the emu, <laughs> emu, emu, emu. How do you pronounce that? Uh, I put as a tattoo. There are certain things I work, uh, I will work on before posting it to social media, such as lights, to add more details, etc. What do you think about the idea? And any kind of feedback will be appreciated. Yes, we will try my best to send you more of the studies. Uh, right on, right on. Um, yeah, the hair does does look really good. Uh, Jesus. So here, you know, this is an illustration. And so illustration, like the point of illustration is a little different. Usually at least com commercial uh, commercial illustrations will be to sell a product. Usually, you know, if you were to be an illustrator at Riot, for example, you would be doing a lot of the, like a lot of the promo art stuff that's meant to sell a product. And so it needs to, to catch the eye, it needs to, to tell a story, it needs to bring people in um, emotionally. And so, Design is not going to be as as important because the designs usually will be will be done by the concept artist what you what you want to become eventually and your job as an illustrator would then be to take those designs and you know arrange them and like pose them in a cool way to create a compelling image um, 
And so when it comes to illustrations, you know, that's that stuff comes a lot later in the program because it's the final term, actually. So there's a lot that goes into it. Um, we need to look at a bunch of different skills before we get to that point and before you have kind of all the uh, all the ingredients to to make a successful illustration. There's a lot that goes into it. It's the most challenging thing that you can do as an artist, a full illustration. So, um, so there's some things that I won't necessarily mention too much, but in general, you know, like uh, what you would really want to pay attention to, like the, the most important things would be to make it very obvious what you want people to look at first, like what's the what's the focal point of your piece. Right now, everything is is everything is kind of yellow, and so the one thing that stands out, the one thing that sticks out from from all of that, is the koala. Maybe a little too much. If you wanted her, for example, to be the to be the focal point, to it, for if you wanted her face to be the first thing that people that people see when they when they look at this painting, which is usually the case, you know, if you have a character in here, especially a character in a, like a portrait mode. Um, you want the face to stand out first. And so I would adjust probably the colors a little bit in here to to make that work better. So maybe, you know, the colas on top of the sun right now is not really being lit by the sun. So maybe you could like warm it up, like warm the colors of the fur a little more. Um, maybe you could do something with her. Maybe with the hair, uh, definitely with the hair you could do, you could guide the eyes towards the uh, towards the face a little bit a little bit better right now all your hair is kind of the same value throughout it looks very nice like all these curls in here like the details awesome um but overall it looks pretty flat so very simple to add a little bit more volume to this just add a little bit of a gradient you know so everything that's lower is going to be a little darker and then things brighten up brighten up brighten up towards her face and so kind of nicely guiding the eye towards where you want it to go. Um, let's try. <laughs> Multiply, maybe. Don't want to do it too much, but uh, just a little bit should be enough. Of course, you, know, you can Fine tune, like pick up a better color. And then up here, to push that gradients even more, let me brighten up the top. Oops. Wrong place. There we go. And then darken, so darken the tips and then brighten the top here. So now you get kind of this this area here that's a little bit brighter. More natural for the eyes to go there. And you're kind of guiding the eye with the help of the hair. So darker, darker, and then brighter. Oh, here. And then the, the cola. The color is definitely the, an issue here. I think the values, everything, like the way that you, that you drew the animal, and the way that you drew everything is very, very nice. It's just going to be and how you manage the values to to make that whole thing work together. So maybe it's the little koala bro. Mm. A little warmer here. Maybe can warm up. Doing it super quick, you know, <laughs> doesn't look too good, but but at least now it doesn't attract as much attention. Um, something else you could do with the the background here, directly behind her head, to have a little bit more glow. Again, to bring the attention back to her a little bit more. Um, 
Yeah, so let's see. Oops. Before, after. Not a big change, but I think it reads better from a distance. You know, like the top here stands out a lot more than it used to. Um, so that's that's going to be like one of the most important things when it comes to to full illustrations. It's just how how you read it because. Uh, a full illustration is like a book, like a paragraph, like a page of a book. And if it's not well laid out, you know, it's almost like you have a paragraph, like a, just a solid, solid paragraph with no, no, almost like no punctuation, no, no, um, no splits in between the paragraphs. It's just like one big block of text. It's really hard to read when that's the case. Um, and then good composition would be the equivalent of having all of that kind of nicely formatted. Uh, and then you can just read it really nice and it's just it flows you, you're not stuck on any words you're not confused it's just it's you know everything makes sense so that's that's composition and um if you, were, you know, if you were to focus on just one thing here i think that would that would be it yeah <laughs> really good job with that with everything else though like it's very nicely painted I hope, like <laughs> next time you do this, uh, I don't know if you did, but try to use something like a try to use a brush that gives you a lot of that stuff for free. Um, trying to find one here. Where is it? Where is it? Hmm. Well, it's not gonna be it's not gonna be that good, but but you know if you can. You can have a brush that does that for, for free, like a lot of uh, just a lot of texture for free. Try that instead of uh, doing like one brush stroke for one hair. It does look awesome though. So, and then finally, just one one quick one quick thing here, uh, the patterns here, like the fact that everything is kind of equally at equal distance, like all these little little things here. That looks a little a little weird. Um, Patterns, like again, we'll see. You see this a little bit later in the program, but um, but when you when you have patterns in a, in a, in nature in a in an illustration, patterns anywhere attract a lot of attention. Patterns are not common in nature. Like if you walk through a forest, you won't see much patterns. So if you had like a, if you're walking in a forest and you see like five trees that are equally placed from one another that are the same size, you know, and like in a straight line, you'd be like, huh, what the hell? Like that's gonna grab your attention quite a bit and the same happens with illustration with art so when you have patterns like this it just it's it's different for us it, it's exciting and so again to go with the composition you know this attracts a little bit of attention right now and it probably shouldn't so maybe make that a little more random so maybe the different the, the, the distance maybe in between it's not the same maybe one of them has a little bit more the other one has a little bit less like just introduce a little bit more chaos, a little bit more randomness in there. I think it's gonna, gonna work better. The house. Moving on to... Mm. <laughs> Maria. I am good, Maria. I hope you're good as well. So I finally fought my Awesome, my tendonitis, and I just finished a character design class. I created this character, and I have some questions. So I want to be a character designer mostly for animation, movies, or 2D games. And uh, for movies, I would like to be in the fiction realm, but not science fiction. Is there a way to approach the hero shape on normal looking characters? Uh, not as much. So that's the only downside with this, uh, with this trick, is that it really good for for heavy designs you know it's it's good when the design process is good, would be would be hard so when you have a lot of stuff that you need to arrange um into a cohesive design that's where the hero the hero shape will shine because it gives you a really really easy way to sort all of that stuff out um but for simpler outfits not as useful um so in that case, you you might be better off just looking at one or two references that would work for you in this case, you know? So the 
what's nice about the hero shape is that for most designs, like most complex designs with armor and like weapons, you know, like the stuff that you would find in the game, like a character, like a game character, um, your your reference boards would be pretty big, pretty large. It would have a lot of stuff on there. And, and the idea is just to combine all that stuff into one hero shape that you can just now source from. And it just makes the whole process a lot easier. And it makes it almost guarantees that your if you do it well at least that your that your hero shape and that your shape language will be quite solid. Um, but when you don't have a whole lot of stuff to to juggle, uh, to, to juggle, not as useful. So in this so in this case it would be more like a yeah like you could pick a a shape that you like that you can repeat. The more basic shape language so that's it you know like the little spiral here uh, this is it kind of like the little, the little hook thing uh, then like repeating that a couple of times here as a pattern that's a good idea having that on the forehead that's a good idea too So yeah, in terms of like character design, this character doesn't have a whole lot of design. You know, it's mostly just a naked character with uh, with a necklace and a shirt. So design-wise, quite simple. Doesn't mean that you know it's not bad. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. Some characters are simpler. But uh, in your case, like you could probably do with having like just one or two references, and you you'd be good anyway. So really, no point in using the hero shape in that case. Um, but what I would look for though are references for um, uh, for these kind these kinds of shirts. So I'm not exactly sure like what this is here. Is it like fur or is this the flap? Is this like an extra an extra like trim on top of everything? But how that works and you know, how the shirt works and like for the the, the folds here in the armpit. Um, look at references for that most definitely. I think that would help. Uh, but yeah, and here, I think the most important would be to adjust the um, the colors a little bit. So it's very cool, very cold, and there's no warmth in here at all. And that's a big contrast that we don't have. And so. Yeah, an easy way would be to either like warm up the background or warm up the, the character herself. One or the two. Let's try it. That's just going to bring in a little bit of better of a balance. When you have balance, it just it's nicer to look at. It's more aesthetic. Don't need balance all the time. Sometimes, you know, you can at some points you might want to to play around with that. Make sure um, make some some of your designs unbalanced and then to unsettle the viewer if if that's you know done with a purpose but other than that if not always better to have balance and so in a, oops. so in this case it could be uh maybe we warm up this character here mm, let's do that with overlay that's not overlay. <laughs> That's too bright. Hard light. Already, there's a little bit more contrast, more interesting. I mean, the, the colors are poo poo right now because you know I just kind of did it overall and now it's kind of like this warm gray it could definitely be a better color than that and it could be the opposite you know maybe she's all blue and the background is kind of warmer that would work too maybe but yeah just having introducing that contrast I think would be nice it doesn't have to be everywhere also it can be just kind of like a halo around her back there just to make her stand out Make her pop from the background because that's another another uh, another thing that happens when when everything is kind of the same the same um, warmth is that it tends to flatten things a lot. So if you have something in the foreground and in the background that are the same, 
yeah, the same warmth, it suggests that they're on the same plane. And so whenever you can, if you have a character, you'll want to have it pop from the background. It's just it looks nicer. It's a better presentation and color warmth really helps with that. Maybe also could just be like sun coming down here. Like she's looking at the sun because she's looking up. So I would imagine something up there. That's interesting. Maybe it's maybe it's Jesus. <laughs> oh, who knows? Uh, and it's Sasha saying that he's not a fan of the blood here. The blood does. It does attract a lot of attention, you know, it's a big contrast with everything else. Again, when you, whenever you have something that's in, in something that's rare, it's always more interesting to look at because it's different from the rest. In this case here, everything is blue and then you have this patch of red. It's like, oh, that's different. And then a lot of the attention is going to be focused here. Maybe not a good idea. You know, maybe it could be instead more subtly introduced down here, maybe at the bottom of the wall, like just some, some subtle splatter. And then most of it is on her. Um, yeah, you want to focus on her. You know, she's the kind of the star of this painting. So make sure that whatever is exciting, whatever, whenever you introduce a contrast of any kind, any kind of contrast, color, color contrast, brightness contrast, value, um, saturation contrast, make sure that it's focused on her first and then the background second. subtle too it doesn't need to be as bold as, as what i did i just do it bold so that you that's obvious what i'm talking about but uh, it could be more subtle and it could be just like maybe the hair is a little warmer maybe the top of the forehead here is a little warmer because it's catching some of the sun top of the, top of the cheeks a little warmer catching some of that sunlight maybe that'd be enough you know it, it brings in a little bit of warmth it focuses all the all that contrast now the warmth versus cool is all all on her face a bunch of different things that you can do. Um... And so, yeah, and if you want to be character designer for animation, movies, 2D games, it's pretty broad. <laughs> uh, for animation and 2D games, for example, I mean, animation 2D games, like if you're talking more about like indie games, uh, that could be pretty similar. So you'll want, you'll just want to make sure that they can be easily animated. So not too much detail. If you have any details, make them a little bit bigger so that, uh, so that they're still visible when the character is moving around, when the character is animated. Um, for, yeah, for movies as well. Yeah. So if it's more like the animation style, yeah, make sure that you look at a lot of, uh, a lot of references for that. A lot of, um, a lot of the characters from, from those types of media that you that you like and inspire yourself from them see how they simplify certain things how big the details are how small some of the details are how small how small how small they can go um see also those same characters animated you know in in the film or in the in the game see see what you can notice about them see what you can't really notice about them and use all that information to to, to kind of inspire your design Because uh, if it's more for animation, it's always going to be more focused on the the silhouette of the character, less the design on the inside, more the silhouette and the colors and the poses, especially. So I would focus a lot on that. And yeah, keep your design simpler. That's always better for those types of uh, purposes in the house. Uh, Sasha saying, go for moonlight or snowflakes. And yeah, that'd be good, actually. Like uh, something falling from the sky because she's looking up. So having something there would be, be kind of cool. Yeah, maybe like little sparkles coming from the, from, coming from the sky or snow or uh, a glare from the moon, maybe.
cool character though. I think, yeah, I, I would just push here the like the structure of her garment. Maybe like show some seams, maybe just so that we understand a little bit better what it is that she's wearing. Is it like a kimono? Is it like a shirt? It's like a t-shirt. Uh, a little bit more information there might be cool. And also like down here is pretty flat. So maybe, you know, like in between the, the arms and the, the torso, maybe it gets a little darker here. It's not as much, not as much light. I can, I can go there. So yeah, just defining the character a little bit better, but um, very good stuff. Looking forward to see what you do with that. Diogo. All right. What's up? So I think this is your first time, right? So. Or is it? Maybe not. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> In term six already. All right, so uh, let's see what we have here. Um, everything is good. Yeah, thank you. Hopefully everything is good for you too. So now I'm going to divide this into two parts. I'm sorry for being too long. Uh, but this is the first time that I'm sending an artwork. There you go. So that's that's what I thought. I don't think I've seen your stuff before. Right on. So um, one year since I started the course. Awesome. So you've been you've been you've been chugging along, chugging along. All right. So first of all, I want to explain the process for making this character. Uh, the entry for the rocket pinup challenge. I was looking at the Assassin's Creed Valhalla art book that I bought and I receive and I perceive that in the art of the characters mainly the blurred photos to create new forms and new elements through them. It was the square flow that I implemented here. That's not what they did. At least it seemed. Let me see. like a lot of the um one thing to keep in mind too is that each artist in that book will have a different different type of workflow like no artists work the same even even on the same team um so yeah it's possible that some people just start from from photos and then just paint on top of that uh, others might just start everything from scratch like this looks like it was everything from scratch done all from scratch this feels definitely more like like a photo base that one too that they just you know Kind of painted on top. Maybe I'm wrong, but but Ubisoft is known to uh, take a lot of shortcuts whenever they can. It's a big, it's a big production, it's a big money machine, and so whenever they can cut corners, they usually do. However, <laughs> mm. my idea was always to give a more scientific justification to at least seem like it is possible to have someone with a mini F16 on their back. Um, right now, I would like you to give your opinion in general so I can be more attentive to these aspects for the next one. Okay, let's take a look at the design here first. So, concept art, right? Point is to communicate ideas, communicate your idea, your design, what this character is all about. So one thing that I'm not sure here is, um, does she have arms? Or are her arms the wings? Because if she does have arms, um, you, you would probably want to, to make them visible. So that, you know, if somebody were to model this, they would know. Like maybe... Show that she's got arms uh not a problem if she doesn't and just just curious because 
most characters would normally have arms and so yeah if she doesn't that's gonna be like that's gonna be like a unique thing that you should make clear like having a quick front shot of her would be um, would be quite useful here and i'm just saying this because you know your goal is to Did I read this well? Uh... Um, yeah, no, so you didn't mention it, but you didn't mention it, but I, I'd be very curious also to, to, uh, to know what your goal is with this, you know, why are you on the program? What's, what's the, what's the whole purpose here? Is it to work? uh as a game character artist is it to to just have fun to just become a better artist to have a patreon to freelance which is it because you know example of how my feedback would change but if it's if it was just for fun you know i would mention um like drawing the front view for the character because that wouldn't really be important it's just it would just be for you Especially if she's part of like a, an illustration where you add a background and stuff like that. But if, but if not, if this is meant like a like a game concept art piece, then yeah, you probably want to see to show the front to so that we understand everything about this design. Um, presentation wise, also I would just make it a little brighter so that we can see all those details because right now a lot of the stuff here is getting lost. Like, you can see it when you zoom in, but but at a quick glance it looks more like like an opaque silhouette hard to discern like what are what are what are all the different details in here so let's try to just make that brighter as a whole first Of course, you know, that's going to mess up some of the, some of the colors, but, but you can fix that. Now, at least we can see the details a bit better. All right. Yeah. I love all the, uh, like, it seems very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Thought, it's a thoughtful design. <laughs> is that the right word like it looks like yeah you paid close attention to make sure that this stuff kind of makes a little bit of sense so I'm, yeah so she probably got she's probably got arms right So mostly it'll have to do with presentation. You know, as I'm the, the longer I look at this, it's it's a cool design, really cool design. It's just it's not presented that well. And uh, so values, big one, big 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 one. Uh, like the values are kind of similar across across the whole design. So that's an easy like an easy contrast that you could use that that you're not using. Um, you know, like just for this kind of stuff here, where you have the wing, like the lower wing here. And how that that really really blends with her pants, so that'd be kind of like an easy one here to to split up. Maybe the uh, maybe the wings could be a slightly different color too. Maybe they could be more red. The pants could be more no like more black or more more uh, more blue, the, the complementary color. So let's try to go for something a little bit more red down here. Actually, you know you have like the light source right here so that's that's gonna be quite bright i would think it would probably brighten up the this area quite a bit
and now it's very clear where the wings end and where her pants begin but also her pants you know they're they're probably being lit by that light as well so they could be a little bit a little bit brighter towards the top here maybe not that much but uh, introducing a little bit of uh, some some gradients would be nice too like an easy easy add we don't need to repaint anything it's just like a little bit of color correction but a gradient from top uh, from bottom from the feet towards the top of the character so the bottom like the bottom of the pants here a little darker and as you get closer and closer towards the focal point they get brighter more saturated and so it's almost like a natural way for the eye to guide the eye towards your focal point here i could vary also the saturation on your in your reds so maybe towards the tip of the wings here it's pretty saturated looks like rust almost same thing here with the calves uh but as you get closer to this to the character to her face maybe you get a little bit more paint maybe the paint hasn't hasn't chipped as much you know on the wings maybe it's not as rusty so you get a little bit more of that a little more of that saturation of that of that red uh once again just kind of dragging the attention towards her face just because you have that extra saturation saturation very attractive for the eyes we can't help it our brain just goes there yeah and then if she's definitely if she's uh, got arms i would definitely draw them somehow so maybe she's just got them like in front of her in front of her body like this but uh but it makes it feel like she doesn't have any um, and and then lastly when it comes to the the presentation i think your the shading could be a little bit better to convey the volumes uh that we see here like all the lines all the de like the design looks super cool it's very very nice to look at um it's just i if i were to try to model this in 3d i would be a little stuck because i'm not sure like if is this the wing like this whole block like what it reads to me as right now is that's the shoulder Kind of like this box and then it kind of turns into that back side here that's kind of in front and then you have the rest of the box so almost it's like if it reads as like this big this big mass uh that thing here and that's it seems heavy you know it seems like it wouldn't fly that easily um so if it isn't if it's more like two plates on top of one another like if this is one plate like one plate like this that has a little bit of thickness and then you have the arm itself that's just angled just slightly differently that's almost like another plate um like two layers almost you know that's the arm layer that's the shoulder layer but individually there would be there would be like two different pieces so maybe it's more like this and that's more like a triangle and they're just they just happen to be on top of one another uh, that probably would work better but if that's the case it's like the the shading on the volumes don't really convey that information so if they are in fact flat try to add a little bit of shadow behind here on that part of the wing to try to make it appear a little flatter you know, like if this is the front of the wing the rest of it is a little bit flatter i don't know like the volumes here i think would be it could be a little bit more uh, better defined but it's only around the shoulders. Everything else reads quite well. Love the pants of all the details in here. Maybe too much details, you know, on the legs compared to the, the rest of the character here. Cause those details are like long and angular. And then down here in the pants, you have all these, all these intricate, like curvy details. Uh, shape language wise, I think there would be opportunity here to kind of unify that a little bit better. So if you're going for these, these angular shapes, do the same with your, with your details down here. So it could be, 
Like those things here could be. Why is it not drawing? Those could be maybe like embedded into the pants and then you could have a more structure pattern to them. More like uh, diamond shapes almost, you know. That would probably work better for the, the wings or just make everything a little bit more organic. Like introduce some of these blue cables up here somewhere just to, just to unify everything. So a lot of stuff in here <laughs> that I mentioned. Uh, quickly, let's take a look at this. Um, Currently on term six, composition storytelling, and from here, we'll focus more on learning Blender and making more environments and key friends. Uh, which, by the way, I love, but also like to make characters, character, uh, character. Okay, so there you go. There's there's your goal. Um, I like to make characters, creatures, everything. And this is where I wanted to ask for an opinion. Bearing in mind that I have an average of three hours per day and weekend to study, and I cannot pay attention to everything. I would like to know your opinion on how I could organize my learning. Right on. So it depends again if the goal is just purely for fun, which is completely valid goal. I spend a lot of money on my hobbies, you know, I, and I don't plan to take them to uh, to make a career out of them. It's just, it's, you know, you're spending time trying to learn something, trying to get better at it. Might as well do it seriously. Um, but if it is for, for, for a job, that'd be something that's important to know for me as well. Um, it's because it affects that, it will affect that answer quite a bit. So let's just say it's just for fun, because you're not specifying that you want to be, that you want to work as an artist. If it's just for fun and you want to kind of tackle everything, I would... Take a look at the um, the the schedule that I have in my store. So I have, I have two different schedules, one for you know, if you have like all the time in the world to, to work on your arts, it's scheduled for the whole day uh, for seven for seven days. So it's like a week schedule. Uh, but there's also one for, for busy people that, you know, they have a good chunk of their, their day that's just occupied by work. And so it's what to do with the time that's left over from that. Have a look at that. Maybe that will help. Uh, I'll show you really quick where it is. that thing here so yeah I've been like loosely following um, following these for a number of months now especially when I when I'm not sure like what to focus on when I don't have any preference sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll want to focus on something want to practice one particular thing but but when I don't I just look I just go by that like all right I don't have anything to do today, so what should I do? And just look at that and all right, cool. So, um, try that, maybe. Because the schedule is meant for kind of everything. So it's a, a like an all art overall. It's not specific to characters or environments, it's kind of just overall. And so I think that might be a good fit for you. So have a look, hope that helps. See you next time. Moving on to Scott here. Mm. Where's my, there we go. <laughs> Sasha saying that, um, that the exhaust is landing right on her bottom. Yeah, she might, she might get a little quite warm here. Shh, toasty butt. Um, so maybe just like adjust the spray. What the hell? I get it. Shut up, Photoshop. Maybe have it go like more clearly in this direction. Kind of like get shooting maybe like particles in that direction. Although I don't know how that would work when she's flying because uh, she's gonna she's gonna crash it. So yeah, it would need to kind of rotate somehow. But um, maybe have like mm, maybe have it like stick out some more. So that uh, like the thrusters a little more, there's a more distance between the body and it. Like it's sticking out a bit more here. But even though it's going full blast, and it's not gonna not gonna land on her directly. Maybe. Back to Scott. 
some progress. <laughs> I'm good, Scott. Hope you're good too. Um, some progress on this turn. And adding. Excuse me, adding the cannon ports, but not much more than that. Ooh. Yeah, you did a good job with these. I was. I was waiting for you to screw these up. <laughs> like, I'll be able to get him to give him feedback on that, but I guess not. All right. Well played. Oh, I like what you did here with the back. Yeah, that's way more interesting. And and the the big thing with this this drawing here is going to be how you play with the scale of things. Like some of your lines may be a little too thick uh, to really convey scale properly. So like your masts here, they like those the thick lines, they're really really thick. You know, kind of um, the usual idea with line art is that everything that's in uh, in a distance, you want to go thinner with the lines. And so the ship, you know, is not up close. We're not like on deck. Um, we're somewhere at sea floating. Like, no, please don't leave me. Uh, like we fell off. Uh, we fell off board. It fell off. What's the word? Fell off. On board, off board, whatever. Um, and we're looking at this from a distance. It's not close to us and it's, it seems like it's a big ship, you know, look at all those cannons. Uh, so it's pretty far and it's still quite big. And so, yeah, to convey that, to convey that scale, I think I would just work on the line thickness a bit more. You can keep the outlines a little thicker. Like I think right now they're pretty good. Like that, that would be good for an outline. Maybe this one here could be a little thicker to match. But uh, but all these details on the inside of the silhouette, I think they could do with like half the thickness. And and once you do, it's just like tweaking the line thickness. It's gonna make your ship appear bigger, less of a toy, more like a big, big structure that's um, imposing. Because thicker lines looks more like a like toys. It re, it really it it really um, brings the scale down. And um, yeah, maybe like some some opportunities here to 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 detail those those box shapes a little more. Like right now, it's just a straight line, but uh, but maybe it can it can curve a bit. Although like that would mess up all those windows, but um, maybe maybe the corners are curved. I can kind of just continue that line here, curve it a little bit. Just trying to get that that boxy boxy look out of here. Yeah, maybe just having things like continue here, like details, curving, or maybe this whole thing here is like slightly curved. Maybe here it's also curved. More curves, I think. I think would be nice because boats are boats are pretty curvy. They need to be they need to be aerodynamic or water dyna <laughs> whatever the word is for water. Overboard. Yeah, there you go. Thank you for the confirmation, Sasha. Uh... Yeah, man, looks good so far. Still, so. so... Like the addition of the cannons that really helps the scale, even though your lines line thickness is a little too big, a little too thick. But uh, anyway, this is going to affect a lot of this stuff here as well. So thinner lines will help the reads, because right now these probably don't read as as much as you would want. Especially those in the back here that becomes becomes just kind of like a, a block of black lines. Um, thinner lines will help you get more more of those details and. Also, just keep in mind with distance, you know, you lose a lot, of, a lot of those details. You know, just like, uh, just like in real life, we can observe a lot of the details up close, stuff that's surrounding us, like, right? you know, in our immediate surroundings. But everything that's a little further out, a lot harder to pick up details. Like if you look in the distance, you won't be able to look at, uh, you know, 
like the frame detail on the house and you know that kind of stuff it just becomes kind of just like a tiny tiny dot for the whole house same idea with this so any way that you can kind of simplify that so that it doesn't become just this dark spot uh, but instead has the same value as the rest so a lot of the times yeah it's going to be like any detail that you can combine into one or maybe like three three little strings that you combine into one do that or any way that you can abstract that with fewer lines would be the way to go the hell scott moving on to ooh. <laughs> moving on moving on to this hairy man <laughs> so luca um i am good hope you're good as well there are some these are some attempts to study clothing on naked people how's it going i think the worst one is the arm of this guy beneath i'm not sure about the folds near the shoulder also put the tension folds uh, the tension points i found so you can tell if anything is wrong with that too all right let's take a look let's take a look at this guy here it's probably the the simplest one here because you're not gonna get too much too much folds especially not too too many folds that are unusual so you should have more of a visual library to tackle this let's take a look so yeah good job with the values you know going dark enough when when needed so that, that looks quite good. Maybe I would go a little darker in like the armpit here. You know, you can see the, the, fold in the, the fold in his arm. It's quite dark, almost pure black. And so that just tells you that you can go to about as dark in, uh, in other areas as well. So maybe in the color here, there's not going to be a whole lot of light going in. Maybe in the armpits. Maybe on the inside here of the sleeve, you can have a little bit more darkness. It just helps to bring in some extra depth. Uh, shading wise, yeah, I think you did a pretty good, pretty good job. Maybe you look at the, uh, the leg here a little more though. Like you have a strong highlight here and then everything else kind of, you know, gets darker and darker as it goes towards the inside of the leg. So I would do the same thing here as well. So on the inside there, darker. So really shade, you know, shade the pants the same way as the legs are shaded. And here the bottom of the leg is a lot darker than the top of the leg. So you can indicate here the there's a bend in the leg. And you can indicate that with just the values. Uh, but yeah, in terms of the folds though, um, I think your folds are just a little too timid. I don't think you have the right idea in general. Like they're they're well placed. They're just too too timid. So I can hear like around the around the pants like these. That's right, you know, that, that folds alright. That's good, that's good. Just make them deeper, more visible. Commit to it. Here around the arms so yeah tension up here so you're gonna get a lot of folds kind of going around around the shoulder uh, the shoulder itself is like this big ball so right here where the ball is pushing against the fabric you're not gonna get too much too much folds there at all uh, but it'll be around that ball shape so maybe in front here uh, where the ball turns into the bicep when the delt turns into the bicep uh, you might get some, some fold this way it's tighter, you know, it's, it's biceps pushing against the sleeve. Adding a lot of tension this way. And then yeah, around the shoulder here. And then towards his chest, because he's, uh, he's uh, a pretty massive. And so all of these folds here are gonna kind of contour. Basically the same thing is gonna happen with the shoulder. So around the chest muscle here, it's gonna be pretty flat because it's pushing against the shirt, but it's all in between. So in here, in between this mass and that mass, you're going to get some of the folds that accumulate there. Under the chest here, you're going to get some folds that accumulate because nothing is pushing against the fabric there. Um, you might get some here in between the two as well. So yeah, 
you had them already, it's just you know making them maybe a little a little bit more visible. And then down here, you know, the, the fold would kinda of just bunch up. Um Yeah, in general just go a little heavier on the folds. This one here, uh, arm of this guy, folds around the shoulder, so yeah, right here. Yeah, um, first off, always shade the the clothes as you would, or as you see the, the reference shaded. So in here, you know, like yours look pretty flat, but if we add a little bit of shading here, take that out and replace with shading around the delts. There you go, so all of that here is going to be pushing against the fabric. So probably around the shoulder, you're not going to get too much. Uh, you rarely have any fold on the shoulder. You rarely have any fold on the chest. Anything that's pushing pushing the fabric is going to be usually usually bare of folds. Um, it's always going to be around here. So yeah, down there, you're going to get some. So a lot, a lot of stretch here. So you get fabric bunching up here at the elbow or on the inside of the elbow. And you're gonna get some tension back here because you're you're trying to pull the sleeve forward, you know. So the there's gonna be some tension here. The sleeve is trying to go towards the front, but the back of the shirt's holding it back. So you get a lot of these kinds of fold here, like on my shoulder, that kind of stuff. <laughs> Going this way, and you have a tension here, tension down here. So yeah, you're gonna get folds like that. But all these folds are gonna contour. What's already there? So essentially around the shoulder, not going to get too much. Maybe up there, behind the shoulder, just like with, just like what we did with this guy here. These folds, they're probably gonna be visible here too, like that, because they accumulate. You know, like you have, if you go like this, you have a lot of, you have a lot of fabric here. But the second that you bring your arm forward, like all this fabric kind of starts bunching up together. So that's that's kind of what what these are. So so yeah, not too much here. It's gonna be mostly bare. It's just gonna be around it that you're gonna get these folds. Um, this looks this looks pretty good though. Like the, the pants here, again, it's gonna be mostly just the shading on these um, on these uh, pieces of clothing. So in the front here, you have the knee darker, darker, darker. It's only like the side of the calf here that's gonna be a little bit brighter. You would do the same there. A little darker down here too. And here, like the knee is very bright, 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 and then dark on the inside. Right here. Dark on the inside of the leg. So that's gonna be the biggest, you know, the the biggest impact. It will be the your shading. And then the folds will be kind of just the, the, the seasoning on top. Of course, you want you want good seasoning, but uh, but the most important is to get those values correct, and that should uh, that should get you like you know sixty percent, seventy percent there already. So, on the house. And uh, so, we'll uh, resume with Sammy after a short commercial break. Um, I'm gonna go grab a bite to eat and I'll be back with some more energy and uh, we'll resume with Sammy in a couple minutes, like 10 minutes maybe. BRB. All right, let's resume here with Sammy. All 
right, all right, all right. What do we man? It's so bright in here. There we go, a little better. So let me close the window. Actually, let's pull it out. Alright. How's it going, Sammy? Yeah. Mostly settled in. <laughs> so still a box or two laying around. Uh, so this is my uh, half-weight baked Rocket Girl entry. She's got 1980s themes, uh, lots of colors and crazy patterns. I'm going to add the um, going to, uh, to add the end slaughter of accessories later in the process. My question: I'm so confused on lighting again. How do I light this? There won't be a background to influence it, so I'm stumped. Well, 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 well. Nice. All right, so we got good refs in here. <laughs> that is a crazy pose. Very nice. All right. Mm. Yeah, lighting on this is going to be A little tricky because you have all this hair kind of blocking the light. So like probably her face is not gonna get too much of it. Maybe a little bit towards the bottom here. But uh but first let's take a look at this character. Nice ref nice refs. Um the only thing here Probably her, mm, like this area here is a little thick. This area, oops. This area right here. So I would either uh, chop some of the back here, actually. Mm. Yeah, it depends if you want. Yeah, probably the front would be better because then she's not going to get enough upper arm. So like down here, you know how this goes in. So ribs and then stomach. So getting a little bit more length here on the legs. So it's going to make the, uh, the upper leg a little bit longer. Or seam at least a little bit longer. Then yeah, when it comes to shading this thing, uh, shading, so shading, you know, as usual, a symptom of your just understanding of volumes in general, not a symptom, but <laughs> a, a result of it. And so my recommendation is just to always just practicing, practice drawing line art. Uh, you'll, you'll level up your shading, you know, at the same time without really working on it. Um, but to shade something like this, to light something like this, pop a new layer in here. So we have uh, in here, I'm guessing this is the lighting that you want to do. So this is strange lighting. Um, so just the stomach, pretty much. Spotlights shining in that direction and that direction only. Right on. Well, so um, the way to do this, you know, the way that always uh, that I think about it, the way that I recommend that you think about it as well, is by simplifying all of this into just simpler shapes, and then just think of lighting those shapes instead, and and then kind of just adjust with the details um, towards the end. But uh, you would have maybe like a flat cylinder in here for her torso something like this and then some more cylinders for the legs and then and then same thing with the arms here 
And so it's a lot simpler to shade that, right? So uh, shade slash uh, light. And so let's say all of that. Let's give it a base color real quick. Then we can add the light. erase to get the light in here so yeah lights coming from the inside here so probably the top of that cylinder is going to get a little bit of that light other cylinder as well uh the torso here we'll get some of that light as well if the torso is mostly flat it just means that uh the torso is like a cylinder but like a, a flat cylinder right so we're we're narrower this way than we are from the front and so that just means that the gradient here is going to reach in a little further in into the shape into the cylinder and uh it's almost more like a box you know so if this was kind of like the edge of the box and uh so the arm as well is going to get some of that light what did they do here so probably all that's in the shadows being blocked by that sphere or that uh, that cylinder but uh you can see maybe yeah you can just have it on the arm here mm. all right all right, so anyways, for that light source, that would be kind of it. And then maybe the neck as well, but you know, same logic, you know, you could have like another cylinder for the neck. And then essentially like you would grab that kind of stuff and then apply it to yours, more or less the same way. And then you figure out kind of the, uh, what happens to the folds then up here, like the difference in the smaller details, like how these to, to adjust it to your actual drawing. But, uh, but you should think about it in that way. And then if you have another light source, then you do the same thing again. So let's say the light source from the top now. The top of this cylinder is going to be lit. Back of that cylinder. Top of that cylinder here. We get some of that light as well. This, the top of this cylinder will get some light too. And that could be the second light source. And you would apply that then to your actual drawing. That would be the process. So... Yeah, so not so much a problem that your uh, that your background you know doesn't have anything. That's uh, just a gradient. That's completely fine. Uh, I think it's dark enough. What? Got interrupted for a second here. Um, but yeah, I think the background is dark enough, so the character you know stands out pretty well from it. Um, yeah, in that sense, I would just maybe boost these lights here a bit more, like the contour light, to really make her stand out. Uh, and then yeah, you had another light source back here, so that's good too. So that could be like the one here, that side of the body, underneath the arm, underneath the legs. And again, more tools for you to separate her from the background. So if anything, I would just like punch these out a bit more. Or darken the background in certain areas. Um, but you just want to make sure that you get, that you maintain that contrast between the character and the background. Contrast and values, mostly. Moving on to two to two to oh, oh did I not grab the text for this? Uh, oh, 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 oh. Let me get that real quick. Announcement. This was from Ariel. Uh, so those are my first clothing from reference attempts. Right on. Clothing from reference. Mm. Mm -hmm -hmm. That looks nice. Would help to see the reference too, but uh, like next time, but um. That looks very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Very, very, <laughs> not compelling, very believable, <laughs> uh, especially the male, the male character. I really like what you did here. A little bit of shading as well. Very nice. Yeah, 
I love how you have some some folds that are a little deeper, some other ones that are a little more, a little bit more subtle. Uh, you don't seem to have too many like patterns in here, aka like folds of the same you know the same width that kind of repeat themselves a lot. Uh, yeah, the male character was really good. He did a really good job here. Yeah, kind of what I was uh, saying to Sammy, but like maybe in the leg here. Maybe that the, like the lower leg here is a little darker, just to make sure that uh, we see that it's two volumes, you know, like two different cylinders in different angles. One that's like that, one that's like that. This one will be shaded slightly different than that one. So same idea here, maybe a little darker down there. But, uh, but yeah, very nice this one. Maybe we can spot the knee as well on this, on that side, on the left leg. But very nice. And then for the female character here. Yeah, I think uh, in her case, like the, the folds are right. It's just the the overall volumes are not, are not shaded as well. So, you know, it looks pretty flat for that reason. So it's always like, uh, you know, thinking always in three different levels. So you have the silhouette itself. You want to shade that properly first, if it's a sphere, for example. Like you want to shade it like a sphere. And then after that, you move on to medium sized details. So if you have some folds in here, some big folds, then you want to shade those properly. And then after that, if you have some smaller details, then you zoom in and then you add those secondary smaller folds. But it's very important that you got it in different uh, stages this way. Otherwise, if you just do the small, the, the small folds, then the overall volume won't read as well because you, you've missed this, uh, missed the step. So in this case would be just overall shading for everything just to give, give volume to things. But, uh, but the structure of the fold, though. Not as clear as the, as the dudes. Um, probably just didn't have as much time on, on her, but... Uh, so it looks pretty good. Um, the only thing maybe I would say would be to... Um, to have better... better flow between the different folds so let's say you have some folds down here and you have some folds up here like the way that they're gonna flow like this would probably not happen at least maybe not like that so no i don't have the reference once again but um like usually there would be they'd be better connected you know so if you have like a strong fold down here and a strong fold up here those would probably kind of blend into one another or at least, yeah, they would blend somehow. It's almost like you have uh, two tornadoes that are colliding. They're gonna, they're gonna kind of blend nicely together. <laughs> Not the best example, but because uh, it's all connected, right? So the fabric just can't stretch to infinity. So if there's a strong fold going here. Strong fold, uh, a strong fold up here. Those two need to meet at some point and make with the amount of fabric that they have, make something happen without creating new fabric. And so, just how they're gonna blend together, who knows? But uh, but try always to have them at least end up going in somewhat the same direction. All right. So it's very rare that you have a fold going this way and then another fold kind of going that way very rare um usually if you have like two strong folds they're gonna somehow kind of blend together and continue in the same ish direction Oops. moving on to tamas Goddamn band-aids don't stick at all. What the hell? 
might help to put some glue on it. Um, not much to show today. Still practicing the head construction. Are these okay-ish to move on to the, fe uh, the facial features while still drawing these? Or should I grind them more before moving on? Uh, these are really good. These are very good. Very precise. Very clean. Not deformed. Some of these, like this one here, maybe you could have a slightly uh, longer chin. You know, like you could extend that a bit more. Because you still want to have enough distance here, you know, like between the chin and the uh, the neck. And also, like he made him seem a little, a little too short, like more, more like a ball. But, uh, but yeah, no, I'm just nitpicking though. Uh, these are great. They're really good. Yeah, from here you have all you need: eye sockets, nose, mouth. Like that's what I would, I would start with um, initially, at least. Like don't. It's better to get used to positioning them properly in the face in the right perspective without, you know, without spending too much time working on, on smaller details. So it's just like super simple, uh, you know, like simplifications for the, the facial features. That should be enough. It's like a ball for the nose. If the nose is centered, you draw the ball in the center. If the ball, if the, the head is tilted, you draw the ball off center, you know, in that direction or in the opposite direction, if it's the other side. Um, and making sure, like making it a habit to draw to draw the mouth, but in, in the right the right perspective. Again, based on those guidelines that you already have here, so it should go, you know, should go in the same angle. Uh, same with the eyebrows here. You can start practicing drawing eyebrows because that's really following the guidelines and it doesn't take too long. Essentially, don't take don't uh, don't do stuff that takes too long um, until you're able to do something like this. <laughs> Not you know not super complex but until you're able to do something like this in most directions like pretty comfortably then after that then i think it's a good time to, to to hone in on the details and go in here and then start to like figure out what happens and what the corner of the eye is how the nose kind of fold how uh what what it blocks how the, the eyebrows really are where to start exactly all those smaller details but um very good very good constructions Yeah, easy. <laughs> That's it. Moving on. Maria. So I tried to make my own creature and this was the result. I tried to make a mix of a deer and a hare. I did some shading too. Let me know if you have any suggestions. <laughs> that really does look like, like a rabbit deer. <laughs> that looks really good. Uh, the just this super super tiny detail, but you know, I I would furry up the the front legs as as much as the back legs. Like the back legs seem seem actually three things that I want to point out. So um, really good job on the shading here. Like this works really well. Uh, the way that you suggest the anatomy is very successful. Maybe we're missing that a little bit on the on the back leg here, like having some some sort of a indication for the uh, like the, the 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 quads and all the uh, biceps the biceps femoris and maybe maybe the gastrocnemius. But yeah, maybe just some extra definition in the legs just to match what you have here because she's uh or she, I, don't, I don't know what i'm saying she but this creature is uh it's pretty ripped you know and the, the f so that's number one um number two always mm, not really a, a problem um but that's always a little weird you know when you have kind of it's within the same animal but there's two different two different um, 
systems, you know, for the anatomy. So one way you have actual fingers and the other one are toes and the other one you have hooves. So personally, like I would, I would match those so that they're the same. Uh, it would just, it would be more likely for that creature to exist if that was the case, because that's very unlikely to ever exist. And so that might, you know, for some people, me included, take the, take the, the, the believability, the, the realism out of it a little bit, like it breaks the, it breaks the fiction, for me at least. Um, so I would go like one way for both, either hoofs everywhere or like these kinds of, uh, these kinds of feet. And, uh, and then, yeah, so the fur also, like the amount of fur everywhere. So the amount of definition that you have suggests that there's very little fur, almost like a horse, you know, like a very, uh, very close to the body, not a lot of fluff. And that that's what allows us to see all this uh, this definition. But uh, but here you suggest that she's, uh, it's, it's a little fluffy. And so I would definitely have some more of that, like continue that fluff everywhere in the, in the legs too. You would have it here like in the in the armpits the leg pits uh, a little bit everywhere essentially and then that definition would kind of would kind of blur as a result of the extra fuzziness and then lastly um, that's all that's pretty busy so I really like the idea of having long long ears maybe the ears could be like hanging instead you know because they're they're pretty big and you already have something that's sticking up, so maybe the ears are just... Yeah, like a rabbit, you know, kind of laying on the side of the body. They still they still work, they're still big, they're still good ear hearing, but uh, but they're not competing for space with the, uh, the, 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 the antlers. So, couple, couple... Uh, couple of things but overall very nice um <laughs> it's a very su very successful drawing almost like almost like to see the uh all this detail in the anatomy so personally i think i would just maybe just remove the fur in, in most areas maybe just keep it for the extremities yeah, that could be cool too like she's pretty she's you know pretty uh pretty well defined like pretty shredded everywhere except the legs and so maybe you start to have like these work horses you know like the the big horses that's that carry a lot that's uh, that carry carriages and stuff like that they always have like a lot of a lot of fur here around their hooves so maybe maybe that could be that could be it like just furry extremities furry tail furry ears maybe like the tip of the ears but everything else pretty shredded a couple ideas Um, that helps, Maria. Very good shading, very good. And then, um, yeah, in terms of the colors, I mean, you could go many different ways here. So, I'm very curious to see what you're gonna do. Moving on to Timo. So, I'm now working with my two point perspective, and I'd like to ask some questions and show some progress pics before I continue. Um, so, uh, number one, inspiration idea. Right on. Uh, my building will be square and I've put my vanishing points quite far away. Do you think this perspective works? Number two. You almost always say, you know, when your vanishing points are pretty far apart. Um, very hard for things to go wrong. So if this is it, you know, that looks, that looks great. That's really, really good. Nothing seems to be too stretched. Nothing seems to be like... Nothing weird going on. So that's good. Uh, number three, just a lot of construction lines. Yep. <laughs> Four adding colors in perspective using scale tool. And five, adding some base colors. Hell yeah. Look at this. Well done. Measuring everything properly so that all of these feel like they're at the right distance. 
That looks good, man. You did a really good job with this. Love the colors too so far. A little bit of cool, cool light coming from the background here. Warmer in the front. Very good. Very good. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if you want to add more, you know, add more light, add more uh, shadow and sun in here. Because you already have like a really nice, really nice base. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't think I have anything to, uh, anything to, uh, to criticize here. <laughs> like usually it'll be these things, you know, like the, the arches. But man, you did a really good job with these. God damn super accurate and it looks awesome as a result you know like the little bit less of an opening here a little more of an opening like you really feel like it's it's in perspective it's it feels like you did it in 3d to be honest so uh <laughs> yeah very well done yeah you got this i would go to town clearly you know clearly you've uh you understand the skill that's it's uh you have a really really good grasp on it so i would just go to town add a bunch of details have fun so far so good ship it Yeah, I, can't, I really can't think of anything else. Um, what could you do to push? Like one thing that would be a little, I mean, it's not even in the building, so, you know, you don't need to do it, obviously. But, uh, but it's always, yeah, it, it depends. You know, if you're going to add all of these, these small details, then really don't listen to anything I say. But it's always cool to have uh, for these buildings here to have a little bit more, a little bit more depth, you know. So maybe this this facade here kind of sticks out some more. I'm just just for future reference, you know. I don't want you to, to have to redraw everything here because it's 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 good the way it is. It's nothing to change. It's just maybe just to spice things up next time. So maybe like having that yeah that section kind of stick out some more. It's almost like this this entrance section is different, and then the rest is a little bit more recessed. Um, Yeah, and having like things that stick out or things that you can. Anyways, anything that to make it less like a box usually, usually more interesting. But um, but so far so good, crushing it, awesome. Moving on to Jade here. I am doing good, Jade. <laughs> good, good to to hear it's sunny over there. It is sunny here as well. All right, so uh, I've studied shading inspired by the artist 82 Pigeon. I've yet to um, to see who that is, but uh, must be pretty popular. A lot of people bring him or her up. I need to check after the stream. So could I have your feedback on those since I'm not confident about it? You're not confident? Is that the reference? Is that what it is? That's his? Oh, gotcha. Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. Very nice, very nice. Very nice style. My silence says it all. Uh, these are really spot on. Uh, 
I'm trying to find any like a mistake somewhere, but yeah, no, you should you should feel more confident about this. Um, I think it's not the drawings you need to fix; it's your confidence because these are really good. Uh, very nice structure to the face as well, uh, and just really, yeah, really just good understanding of of those volumes. What happens here? Like maybe this one feels a little, a little bit more flat, but again, you know, he's, he's in the shadow, so you're not going to get as much contrast. Um, but maybe, you know, maybe you could carry some of that little bit of light towards the side here. Similar to what you did there, you know, so it's almost it's this, but less. So having a little bit of that light kind of creep in on the side of his, his, uh, his, his, uh, his jaw. Maybe here a little bit too. Mm. Just like it feels pretty flat here. So maybe we could push the, the depth of the lips. Just go in maybe a little more. Mm. I'll just add just more shadows down here. Because you go pretty dark with the eyes, you know, like the. If that's the darkest value that you go, that's the darkest value that you have to use, that you can use everywhere else. So, yeah, like in the, the space here between the lips, I think you could go a little darker in the corner of the mouth here. You could go a little darker also, just to push that, uh, push that contrast some more. Yeah, I would do the same thing maybe with the temple as well, like this side here, the head is catching a little bit, a little bit of light, like essentially this whole thing here, all of that, it's pretty flat. All things considered, that's that should be that should be receiving approximately equal amount of light, like more or less, a little bit less, you know, as it uh, transitions towards the front of the face. But, um, but yeah, maybe. So in this in this sense, if you have a little bit here, you would have a little bit up there as well. Same idea here on this side. The uh, the front of the head, you almost think of it as a like a circle, maybe like a big circle, touching, formed by like the this part of the eyebrows, like the first part of the eyebrows. So you can trace like a big circle here, and that's the front of the face, and everything else here is gonna start to to curve backwards, and uh, so yeah, here that's why maybe adding a little bit more of that light creeping in towards the front of the face a bit more. As a result of that, same idea here, on the other side of the jaw, just like this guy, but a little bit more. More of that subtle, subtle light. Um, and then, and then here, uh, maybe the the neck area here could be a little better because you have them kind of blend into one another quite a bit, uh, so the this one is very clear, you know, that one's nice. It's it's bright here, dark back there, so you really see the, the head as being its own thing. Uh, these, that one maybe you could have a little bit more darkness, darkness is under the, under the chin here. The idea, you know, when you, uh, when you shade something like this, different volumes that are overlapping, let's say in this case you would have like a sphere and then a cylinder behind cylinder being the neck uh, you would shade them as if they had no light as, as if there were no light sources so shade a sphere like a sphere and shade the cylinder like a cylinder then what happens is that this here like the underside that would be the underside of the chin that's gonna be the darkest thing and then the neck itself is gonna be lighter so if you're never sure which is lighter the chin or the or the neck or you know any other objects that you uh, that you have overlapping like this, um, that's the idea. So the chin here, a little darker, and then the neck itself will be a little bit brighter in contrast. <clears throat> a 
little too intense here. And you would probably need to have like an in-between color to make the connection between the two, but yeah, you're you're missing a little bit of that here as well. So maybe, maybe we can take the same color and use that for the neck and darken the chin just a bit more. But it stands out against it. Um, yeah. Nice. <laughs> Very nice. All right, Cody. So I got very frustrated with my lack of ability to color. So I've been focusing mainly on that for a while. This is a work in progress, digital paint, and it always looks good on my screen. And then I look at, at it elsewhere and it seems too dark. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I keep watching the color, uh, watching the color lessons, but I feel like something's not clicking. What adjustments would you make to these colors? All right. Well, yeah, your screen, I would definitely try to adjust it. Like if you have a, um, a maybe a phone, that would be enough just to compare to see like overall values, how, how off it is. Maybe it's just a matter of, of darkening your screen a little bit. You know, maybe your, uh, your screen's a little too bright. And so you get used to that, that extra brightness. And then on all other screens that are a little darker, then everything seems too dark. So maybe it's just a screen calibration thing. If you notice it, you know, on uh, on different screen, it's being different. But yeah, this is definitely a bit dark right now. So let's make that brighter. Ah, there we go. Whoa, there's so much stuff in here. So much stuff that's not visible. Whoop. So unless you're planning to add light, you know, I would brighten it up quite a bit so we can see before after before after and again you know when it comes to brightness at night uh, even if you want something to, to look like it's at night um i think i gave this example last week too but uh, you know with a camera like with a real camera that you take a photo at night you can always adjust a bunch of settings and then to make it really bright, even though it's a night shot, it can still look quite bright uh, by just tweaking those settings. And so you're essentially the camera. You can make all those decisions if you want. So as long as the colors that you use, as long as the, uh, you know, the kind of lighting that you use has nightly, nightly characteristics, it should still read as a night scene, no problem. So yeah, I like the colors so far. You have this, uh, this nice cre cre creepy, desaturated, uh, 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 complementary color palette going on. So with the, the purple and the greens. Um, and then you have a character in the middle, stands out quite a bit because she's a lot a lot brighter. So you have a, a good, good contrast there in terms of values. And I, I like that she's not against the tree. You know, she's against a darker background, so she pops even more. So very, very good. Um, this could totally be like a, in, that's not really a thing anymore, but, uh, you know, the top of a, like a, a music, music CD title of the artist here. Da, 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 da. And then there you go. That's your, either your book cover or your, your song cover. Mm, yeah. When it comes to like. Your creepy lighting, you know, it's, it's uh, to creepy scenes. It's going to be driven by lighting most of the time uh, or lack of lighting. And, but in this case, I mean, she's still outside, right? So you can see the stars. So it's a bright sky outside not a bright sky, but a clear sky. And so maybe you'll see the moon. That'd be, that'd be nice. That could add a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a contrast in terms of warmth. And uh, uh, yeah, just the warmth of the lights in here, warmth of your colors. Because right now everything is it's kind of the same thing. It's kind of everything is cold-ish, not super cold, but uh, but it's kind of borderline cold and warm. We're not really too sure because it's it's overall the same thing everywhere. So introducing an extra contrast that way, I think that'd be nice. Maybe a little bit of a, a little bit of blue, and so that everything here feels maybe more cozy. 
So maybe, uh, yeah, stuff in the back here, in the background. The top of the sky, maybe it's a little brighter. In between the branches. And that's... I'm just gonna do it overall, because it's gonna be faster. Um, if you can change the sky color only, I think that'd be best. And maybe have a little bit of a glare from the, uh, the moon. Hitting on her, so now she's like being lit. You know, the spotlight's right on her. She stands out even more. Maybe a little bit of highlights on her body from the moon. The moonlight. Her and then you can have that same thing here on top of the roots. A little bit. A little bit of a blue tint here on the on the grass where the uh, the moonlight is is seen. Maybe back here too. But, uh, but yeah, at this at this point, you know, I think to me is the most fun when uh, when it comes to to lighting a scene, especially a scene that's that's so well done already. It's nicely nicely shaded. You have everything here already. Um, an album. There you go. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, an album cover. Yeah, I think you just, yeah, you were just missing a little bit of that, that warm versus cool balance, you know, warm versus cool color balance. Um, and then, and then gradients, always, always gradients. So by just having a little bit of a, like the moon glare like this, you're already introducing gradients. You know, it's this part of the purple is more blue. It's cooler than the bottom part here that's a little warmer. And so that's a gradient. That's nice. Same thing now. She's got a gradient on her as well. Her skin just as a result of that that extra blue. Everything here is a little bit cooler, a little bit brighter too. And then gets it changes towards the bottom of her feet here. So you kind of have this, this nice uh, suggestion of, of interest going towards her face. And it makes this focal point quite successful. Yeah, and this is probably the easiest light to paint. It's not easy, but uh, when it comes straight from the top, so you just have to imagine you know, anything that's that's facing the sky is going to get a little bit of that light. So maybe the top of some of these branches here, so maybe that, that branch here facing up will get a little bit of it, a little bit of it. That one down here, nope, you're facing the ground. You're not getting any light. Get out of here. That's what I would, that's what I would recommend. That's light, you know, a little bit of light here is always Always pretty creepy, adds a lot of ambience, and you have the scene to support it, so very nice. Very nice. You can also have like this crazy moon reflection in the water somewhere. Just saying. Very good. Damn. Especially when it's a little brighter, where we can see all the work that you did. <laughs> so yeah, moving on to Emilio here. So once again, I am... Uh, I'm with this. I hope it's okay to post now, given the finalist has been se uh, selected already. Yep, it's all good now for uh, for art war stuff. I have nothing more to say. I have no, no say in the winners anymore, so... Nothing that I say here is gonna matter. <laughs> so feel free to submit them. Um... So I'm curious about the design problems with this piece, but I'll leave that for next week, perhaps. Uh, for now, I'll keep it to the technical stuff. I know um, I know things like the wings and the bag on the front looks um, look quite bad, but in general, the rendering looks like like poo poo, and it's probably not just that the image is oversaturated. Well, hold on a second here. I uh, will disagree with with some of this stuff here. Hmm. I think your shading is really good here. Very good. You know, like nice lighting on, on everything here. Everything feels like not everything, but most things feel like 3D. Uh, I think you did a really good job with the shading. Um, the saturation is not really bothering me. Although, yeah, maybe you could you could adjust vary it some in some places, but uh, but definitely not an issue per se. Um, 
So I'm a bit lost on what to ask specifically. Just know that there's a ton of problems with rendering technique. So I need to put our advice. Um, okay. <clears throat> so in general, um, so one thing to keep in mind also is you know, you know like if it's uh, if you're not in the finalist, it doesn't mean that there was anything in particular that was wrong with your image. Um, I think that it's just a like a quantity thing in the sense that if a if a piece had like a, a nice character and also a nice background, you're already missing half of it, you know, so you're you're playing with half the coins there. So that's a huge disadvantage in that way. So that's probably what ended up happening here. Um, Because imagine, you know, if you had the same image here, like the same character, everything, but in the background, you had maybe like a part of a, like a cliff or like mountains in the back with like some crazy clouds that are, that are super nicely lit, like the sunshine, sun shining through them. And, uh, and maybe something in the sky here to, to indicate what this guy is fighting. Maybe like some, some dragons are coming out of the clouds. Um, that image, it's already like a beautiful image, but. It could have been a lot more epic, you know, and I think that's that's what the other finalists had. And it's just, it's that's what I say, it's, it's a matter of quantity more than it is just uh, what you did in, in terms of skill. Because skill level wise, you had what it takes to, to be one of the finalists, no doubt. Um, yeah, if that image had like a kick-ass background, I think you would have, you would have made a cut, no problem. So uh a lot of really, really good aspects about this painting very very nice composition maybe i would have cropped maybe like some of this here but you know that's not it's not really a problem it's more like a personal taste but like this i think would have been a just a better frame the way that it is right now um without that extra bit down here maybe the brightness of the wings could uh or like the brightness in general i think could be cranked up a bit more like the everything that's dark i think is a little too dark Oops, wrong one. so if you had gone just a little a little brighter everywhere it's almost like it was a little underexposed the image that's what it that's what it looks uh, that's what it looked like so a little more a little more brightness But yeah, I mean, that looks really nice. Maybe like the, the perspective of that wing too. Like this one here is nice and it's almost like they're in the same, um, they're, they feel like they're in the same perspective, almost like he's uh, he's facing us. You know, but in reality, his torso is twisted, right? So he's, he's looking back. And so that twist of the shoulder, maybe it won't impact that one here, that one here. Uh, there we go. That one here, but the twist in the torso would probably impact the perspective of that wing. So it would maybe be like a, uh, instead of being laid out the way that you have it, like this, like laid out flat, maybe it would it would curve. So it would go more like a, like this here. You know. So this would be kind of like the top of the wing. This would be the underside of it. That could have added maybe a little a little bit more. Uh, dynamism to it but yeah it's just small stuff man uh... because yeah your anatomy is really really good here love the hand gesture did a really good job with that face looks good um, like the shading on the body, maybe it's a little flat. M not flat, a little flatter than what it, than what it could be. So uh, it's just like the light direction, maybe it's not as clear. So it seems like you have a light source coming from from this side here, like kind of from the top, but from this angle a little bit because the top of this like here is very bright. Um, so yeah, I think I would just maybe think of like the shadow that would uh, that this arm would create 
underneath here. So probably like that part of the chest wouldn't be wouldn't be as bright as a result. So it'll be blocked by the arm. Maybe part of that uh, that that fluff here too as well. So a little bit of lighting, a little bit of lighting, like tightening of the lighting. I think that that would make a somewhat of a difference. And then towards the front here, maybe that's not facing the light as directly, so that could be a little darker. That you really feel like the body's round. Uh, but it's really it's small stuff like that. Like, it's a really, really good piece. Don't think that it's not. I love the wings here, the treatment, like the warmth in the, in the wings. Uh, just the added light in here to, to kind of just, you know, have more detail so that we can see more of the feathers. Very, very nice. Really good decision. Yeah, love the the colors that you used. Sure, the background's a little a little saturated, but it's not so much. Uh, that's not even a problem. It's just a, it's a saturated piece. You know, that's that's kind of the aesthetic of it. It looks nice. I, I like this level of saturation. Um, but maybe the the blue of his um, like that thing is uh, <laughs> whatever this is. I don't know the word for this, but maybe that could be a slightly different color. You know, it could still be blue, but maybe like a different blue. So that it's, it, it contrasts maybe more with the background. So let's try maybe like a uh, warmer blue, like more like a turquoise. Let's see what happens. Because here, you know, this, those two colors are pretty much the same. So you're really losing the silhouette there. Not a huge deal, but overall, it tends to disappear in the background, especially this little flap here. And the hat as well. Okay, maybe just something that's a little, a little warmer. Slightly different blue, or warmer in either direction. I mean, just not the same color as the background. Almost anything would do. Why is the live video interrupted? Come back. What's going on? Weird. Uh, but yeah, so that's that's about it, Emilio. I would be very proud of this if I were you. Uh, it's really just minor stuff. You know, that's the... When I say when I... When I did a video about like the, the 80 80 20 rule, you know, the 80% of the 20% um, of your effort usually contributes to 80% of the result. Uh, in this case, you know, you're you're working on the final 20%. Uh, yeah, you're working on the final 20. You're working on the final 20%, and so it's going to take you 80% of your work. <laughs> if that makes any sense. So. It's a beautiful image like you have you can cr clearly you can create beautiful illustrations and so now it's just a matter of just just figuring out that last 20 percent and that's going to take the longest because it's just it you get diminishing return after a while you know it's this stuff that you can't notice as much it's not as flashy but it'll be all the small details that i mentioned and uh and then that's just that was, that's gonna keep better and better get better and better with time and uh like i said you know if you if you just had a background here like something that's a little bit more a little bit more fleshed out you probably would have been a finalist, so uh, that should be quite encouraging. Well, that helps. Moving on, Bruno. <laughs> All right, so I did have a good week, Bruno. Hope you've been what? Hope you've been well too. So it's been a while since my last submission here, huh? Uh, to, yeah, <laughs> it has. So today I bring my artwork character for you to review. I would like to hear what you think about this one. Please be harsh on the one brush feedback um here's a bit of my process too i tried to do a lot um to do as much variations as possible especially on the color i will also include my mood board in the next comments there you go yeah 
Yeah, so dark with a glowy amount of green. There you go. That's it. Very welcome, Emilio. It looks really good, Bruno. Um, first thing, uh, the first thing I noticed, probably just presentation-wise, you know, the character kind of gets lost in the background, sharing a lot of the same values, same colors. So this and this, very close, you know. It doesn't move a whole lot from here. So that's one thing that I would recommend that you tweak right away. So probably just making the background darker or much brighter so it doesn't compete with the character. I don't know if I can select it here without grabbing a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah. Let's do it quickly then. Just do it for this area here, but um. Just something like this would already reveal the character a lot more. That's nice, you know, character is nice, so don't hide it. It's like he's hiding in a cloud. Uh, other than that, like anatomy wise, most of this makes a whole lot of sense. No problem here. Different variations here. I like the one that has the most, like, that has contrast between the fur and the skin color. So maybe I would, like, change or, like, push one or the other some more. Either it's uh, just making the skin a little lighter in contrast or just making the fur a different color. Yeah, because in here, maybe, like, we lose the hair. It's not exactly clear where the hair is versus against the torso you know like you have a lot of again similar similar values here similar colors so just break that up maybe a bit more like this guy maybe that's a little too much but i think that was my favorite one here although the skin would need to doesn't necessarily need to be orange i mean it could it could be white like light gray or it could be, it could be green it could be any color but i think this level of contrast between the fur and the, and the skin is quite nice Uh, yeah, it's a really cool concept too. I love the uh, Brazilian colors here. Uh, yeah, I think a little bit, a little bit more warm. You know, like uh, like here, that like the orange kind of balances the the coolness of the the yellow and the green. Like those two combined together. It feels pretty cool, even though it's yellow. Uh, it's just that's all there is. You know, there's nothing really to to give them um, to give them a temperature because it's all relative, relative. But if you have the if you have the orange now, it feels like oh, the orange is the warm color, and then the the green and the yellow are a little colder as a in contrast. love like the, the green hues here that's sick um yeah to so this guy like i love his uh love his body love the anatomy uh maybe the the pose could have been more engaging like he's right now it looks like he's looking down you know he's uh he's not really paying attention to us i think it'd be cool if he's like he's looking at us and like coming towards us trying to reach or if there was more of that that uh emotional connection between the character and and the viewer Yeah, maybe, maybe blue, blue effects. Let's try that. Like so. 
Sasha is recommending. <laughs> Beautiful selection. All right, that'll do. Let's try it. A little bit of hard light, maybe. Cool contrast, yeah. Like it, the the blue helps then make the fire uh, and make the feathers really like it, they take up the the warm colors then the warm roll uh, against the blue. Yeah, that totally works. Uh, yeah, so it'll be more more the pose, maybe something a little bit more a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more engaging. Um, Design wise, I think this guy, oh, this guy's really, really cool. I don't think I have much to say. Like his shape language is very, uh, very solid. The patterns can repeat themselves. Uh, maybe introduce a, a few more gradients. That could be cool because he's, he's he's pretty lengthy. You know, he's got these long limbs, um, and so yeah, having some some gradients there, I think might be it might be kind of cool. So just the arm, for example. How you vary the uh, the colors, so how you vary the hue and how you vary maybe the the values a little bit and saturation too. So maybe the green down here is a little too saturated. Maybe you could desaturate this and saturate it more and more as you get to as you get closer to the head. Of the colors as well, so maybe it gets skin gets a little darker, to, uh, a little lighter towards the top here. I mean, gradient super subtle, but it just it really helps the read in general, and it's usually pretty easy to add. It's kind of overall. Um, Yeah, man, it's a bummer. I would. <laughs> that was a that was a cool concept. I would have loved. And if that was the concept sheet, actually, never mind. That's good. That's a good pose. I'm not. Uh, I'm not reviewing this properly. So yeah, this is the concept. The concept sheet. So it should have been pretty neutral. But yeah, I would have loved to see this guy. You know, in uh, in action. Like cooler pose. I'm thinking it's something. I would have loved to see the illustration for that. Hmm. Oh, and does it start like this? It transforms? Ooh. That could be cool. Yeah, Bruno, so... That's all I got, but mostly this would have been a lot better with just better presentation. That's it. Just the background fighting. My like colors are fighting a little too much. Uh, just make sure that there's a lot of contrast there between the background and the characters, in all ways possible. Cause you got the skills to pull it off! Alright, Anas. <clears throat> oh, nice. So you are you are working on the illustration for it. Mm, looking forward to it. <clears throat> So, Anas, um, I am. Thank you very much. So, here are some more studies for the torso. Take your advice and keep it line of work. Any advice or anything that looks wrong? Guys, 
is exploding with muscles. Yeah, I think you're just uh, just missing one here. Brachialis, sandwiched in between. And maybe you haven't gotten to that point. So my apologies if that's the case, but uh, you also would have Koraka Brachialis coming somewhere in here in the armpit. Other than that, that is quite a spot on. Yep, yep, yep. Like the, um, I mean, these here, uh, the internal obliques, you, you don't see them, they're internal. Uh, they're they're hidden under underneath the um, the external obliques. It's just literally like layers, you know. So we have the internal uh, uh, obliques first, and then you have the external obliques that cover pretty much the whole thing, and attaches on the um, uh, the origin is on the hips, so on the entire spine of the hip bone, and so they both attach at the same spot. So there'll be like no difference there. Essentially, they're not visible. So, to practice, you know, to practice this stuff. These are good, by the way. Nice studies. So, one thing that I would uh, not necessarily do. Um, shading, you know, don't worry about that. It takes, it takes too much time anyways. Uh, it takes you time that you could have spent instead on another study. I would do that. For, I would do that instead, you know, get better better bang for your bucks when uh, with the time that you invest. If it's fun, though, keep doing it. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, and for this, you know, when it comes to, to drawing these things, yeah, this is really good, you know, to, uh, it's a really, really good process. Um, very, uh, I don't know, if it were me, maybe not the most fun to do. Like, if, if you can do this, do it, keep doing it. That's a really, really good practice, you know, to, to identify all the muscles. It just forces you to observe better. And, and the next time that, that comes the time to, when it comes the time to draw it, then you'll you'll probably remember a bunch of these already, and then uh, it's just kind of trying to do this on your own, trying to fly on your own, like all right, all right. and then ah, I forgot what happens here in the back. What is that? All oh, right, it's part of the delt. Got it. And then what happens down here? All oh, right, it's, it's all of these here, the, the rotator cuff group. And yeah, doing that back and forth here, having done that that analysis first, it's super super important, it's really really good, uh, really good practice. Another good one. Another good one would be to uh, just start off of uh, start off of a start off of a skeleton. So you know, just like just the bones, and then you slap the muscles on top, because then that's going to force you to really understand where the muscles are, <clears throat> where they're attached, and like which one over the other one. That's a lot, a lot deeper study than this. So maybe not yet, but uh, but very good if you want to if you want to learn anatomy and like. You know, level that stuff quickly. Starting from a skeleton and adding like the surface muscles, all of them. It's not gonna take you long that you'll that you'll be able to uh, to draw this from imagination. Yeah, this one's probably the one that needs the most work. Like uh, that one's that one's pretty damn good. That one too. Maybe just be careful like the the thickness of things. You know, like just proportions in general. So this this is a little a, a lot narrower than that one here. So he's been uh, he's been lifting a little too much from his right arm. He needs to he needs to hit the gym more. Practice the left arm. Um, and in here actually this one here is a little just a little bit off. Um, the deltoid here they would uh, they would they would attach right here a little higher than that. Some more like that. You would have like the posterior head, the middle head, the anterior head, and they attach on the on the spine of the scapula here. So the scapula, you know, that triangle shape that the spine of it is all at the top here. And the trapezius, the thing that you have in blue here, that attaches on top of it. On top of that, it goes into the neck, and then you know along the side of the back here. And 
and uh, your scapula on top on top of the scapula directly on top that's where you're gonna have all these uh, all of these muscles the rotator cuff group rotator rotator cuff group there you go so in first spinatus teres minor teres major and and then the shoulder deltoid attaches along that spine also uh, like on the essentially on the opposite side of the trapezius and so it attaches on the entire length of the scapula it's just that towards the center of the body here it's a little it's just um just tendon so there's not going to be any mass the mass begins a little more on the outside here but it's still gonna overlap all of these other muscles so yeah when it's when it's raised this way you're not going to notice as much but what you would notice here going up and behind that delt would be the um the the the, the uh teres ma uh, teres major down here and then teres minor on top of that on top of it although right now the big delt here is blocking the view so yeah that purple here just have it extend all the way along that scapula same idea here that, that deltoid middle head posterior head have your scapula here always a good idea to include the scapula so that you have an idea of where it is where it's located because a lot of stuff attaches on on that so everything above that that's going to be the trapezius along that line here that's where the delt begins and then you're going to have all these the rotator guff rotator cuff group uh, kind of laying on top of that, going towards the arm itself. So, a lot of stuff in here. Um, but very nice studies. So, keep it up. I hope that helps. Moving on. <clears throat> yeah, the brachialis is a little tricky because it's it doesn't move like the like the bicep does. Uh, like the bicep will flex a lot more than the brachialis than the brachialis can and so the brachialis is always a little bit more more of a pancake in comparison kind of like a plate for the bicep kind of all right santiago ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. so it's me again with this piece um rendering face so i would love to get general feedback on this um you think i should fix feedback on this uh, what do you think i should fix at this current stage i also had another quick question i was talking i'm um, taking a look at the art school schedule that you made a while back and i was wondering would you still suggest to follow that schedule or would you make changes depending on what i want to focus on my art at? yeah so definitely like that's more of a uh, general art study so if you don't know if you don't have any preference if you just want to to just keep the engines warm you know that's uh, that would be the way to go but yeah, if uh, you can definitely remove some classes in there, replace them with something else. Um, so yeah, remove like the environment stuff and replace with with characters, no problem. Um, I would also love to start learning more about 3D modeling to model both characters and props for games, um, like what you used to do on Blizzard. However, I don't really know where to start. <laughs> yeah, so uh, 3D modeling is is a beast you know there's a lot of uh, a lot of technical hurdles to get through before you can you can start to do it for fun at the beginning it's not necessarily fun because you need to learn a bunch of different software it's almost like a if i told you right now you need to to learn like if you didn't know if you didn't know photoshop or something like you need to learn photoshop and then like five other software that are as complex as photoshop before you can even begin to to dabble in 3d <sighs> It's a lot of stuff, you know, a lot of different steps. It's very technical. So I I mean you, you could possibly learn it on your own on YouTube. Uh I don't know. <laughs> That's a, um probably best to follow a course where you go through the entire process and what you need to pay attention to, uh, what you need to be aware of and pay attention to in the different software that you're going to use. Um, like, there's a lot of stuff that you're just never going to use. So, you know, it might seem daunting every time you open something up. Like, if you open Maya up, you're like, oh, oh, Jesus, what's going on? And, but most of that you don't need. So, 
it's just yeah finding like a little a little course a little class to to guide through guide you through all of that stuff i have some in my store <laughs> but yeah um that would be the way to go because otherwise you're just gonna bang your head against the wall after wall after wall after wall and not knowing how to solve the problems because it's at the beginning it's just technical right the the first few months of you dabbling in 3d will be just how the hell do i fix this goddamn problem and you always you always have errors that you don't know how to deal with like stuff's inverted why is that vert all why is that face all black now and all the other ones are normal why and it's just like learning and going through all of these these trial and error and if you do it on your own it's just it's very frustrating um that's what i did initially um but then i started to work in a game studio and then i had the help of you know my co-workers and then they they helped me out they, they showed me the ropes uh, what to do what not to do and so that was huge huge help and so i would recommend you do the same Yeah, probably on YouTube, you know, if you if you just look, if you find if you look hard enough, you should be able to find a bunch of stuff. It's just like finding maybe like the entire pipeline, the entire the entire workflow. That might be a little trickier because each company has a slightly different workflow. Each artist has a slightly different workflow, like different software that they use. Uh, some of some are better for certain art styles. Some others are not that good for certain art styles. So, anyways, that's that. Um, But yeah, this is uh, starting to look pretty good. Yeah, I love the, the added light in here. So the, the light from the sky, that makes a big difference. Very nice. Very nice. I think um, for the most part, it would be just a matter of just tightening up the lighting. So I would use a reference for that if you can. You know, uh, like the magic poser web thing where you can you know pose a character and light it up i would do that here uh just because probably you wouldn't get light here from the explosion you know it's the chest in front uh her back would just block all the light from from ever reaching this this part here so i don't think you would have that um you might get maybe a little bit of bounce light from something else but it wouldn't be as you know it wouldn't be nearly as bright as what you can see here in the back uh, and then yeah, like that big thing, that big container rocket thing would probably block some of the light here as well. I don't know exactly how much. I need to do a bunch, a bunch of tries here to get this, to get this right. Um, yeah, in terms of the lighting, that's 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 pretty much it. But uh, shading wise here though, the front, you know, all of that feels pretty flat right now. Um, whereas in reality, you know, this is. This is curved this way. That's curved a different way. And then it blends differently here when it reaches the hips uh, on both sides. And then the legs are also going a different direction. So a lot of um, a lot of surface changes, a lot of different, a lot of different surfaces here that you uh, probably should shade, should identify better with the shading. super rough and not not the best but um but that kind of stuff you know so it's it's not just flat um yeah really really nice metals doing here look at this yay very nice yeah man that's all i have for you what the helps? All right, so okay now. I hope you had a good week as well. I've made some progress on term two, and I've had a lot of fun. I'll show you the I'll show you quickly the content of the Photoshop lesson. But if you can give me your opinion on the anatomy and perspective, I'd prefer it too. Right on. So I'm pretty proud of the rendering for the faces, but it seems that I'm not totally perfect on the perspective. Perfection does not exist. Um, so, especially the 
this one you mean yeah <laughs> four point perspective and that's that is never easy because uh, we're not used to seeing anything like this so it's almost like we don't have any any reference we don't have much of a visual library for anything like this so is it okay is it not okay like you have to you have to believe the 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 guidelines your your grids so um all right, so to answer your question from last week, I would be more interested in character design, but I still doubt because every time I create a character, I can't help bending the story around it. So I don't know if in the long run, doing character design around other people's idea would be fun. Um, well, yeah, of course, that's that's different for everybody, but uh, character design is quite fun. Even if it's not your own story, it's still your own character, your own take on the story. And uh, that's always awesome to do. Always awesome to work on. At least that's what I think. Um, yeah, you don't know yet, you know, no problem. That, but that should become your goal now, you know, to, to kind of figure out what really interests you in art so that you can eventually allocate more time to that so that you get better at that. Uh, so if you have a goal, you know, work towards it. If you don't have a goal, work towards having a goal. <laughs> so, um, yeah, every time you, every time you, uh, you want to draw, like think of, think of, uh, think to yourself, what's the first thing that came to mind? Like what, what was the first thing that you wanted to draw? Like if you open a, if you open your canvas, it's a blank canvas. What's the first thing that comes to mind? What's the first image that you see? Is it an environment? Is it a character? Uh, what type of character? What type of environment? It's something else. Is, does something give you an anxiety versus something else that doesn't? All of these good to think about. Um, right on, so. <laughs> Very nice. Um, the only thing I would say with this is just like, just presentation wise, making sure that uh, you don't have colors that compete too much, you know, so the characters should really stand out against the background like they stand out really well against the black, uh, against the white background, right? Their silhouettes very clear, uh, but on the box here, now that you have a background and a gradient using very similar color, very similar saturation, your characters start to disappear a little bit. It's almost like they're they're blending in with the background, and you don't see them as much here as you see them here. So that would be the the one thing that I recommend, real quick, you know. Either darken your background quite a bit so that your characters stand out, brighten your characters also. That could be, that could do, that could do it, or uh, or just make the background much brighter, kind of like this, so that uh, so that you communicate, so that the box can be seen from any distance. Because you know, essentially, this is a promotional piece. It's to sell that product. So. If you walk in a library, if you're walking in the store, and then you you look you look uh, you know on the other side of the store, and you're like, mm -hmm, and then you spot something that's nice, uh, maybe you'll go get it. But if you look at this thing here, and you're like, it's too blurry, like everything blends together, like, ah, I can't make up with this, ah, whatever. And then you keep walking, and you walk out, and you never buy it. That's not good. Right, we got a bunch of basic shapes here. Nice, nice, nice. Really cool here to have the uh, like the tubing kind of hang around it. Yeah, very believable. Very nice, very nice. Let's see all the different facial features here. Very quickly, and it's not like a, not even nitpicking. It's just something to to keep in mind for the future because it helps. It helps me at least when I think about that. Um, but the the upper lip is always always sticks out more, so the uh, the lower lip will always kind of wrap 
wrap in um not wrap inside but it's like the upper lip is the little roof for it so and the corner of the mouth here they're not equal they're not the same like one is dominant over the other one so the upper lip here is always going to be dominant it lands on top of it and the lower lip kind of slides underneath that to end in the corner so if you look at it from the side view or like three quarter view like what you have here maybe the um your upper lip will be let's say it ends like this and your lower lip will kind of slide underneath so the upper lip always have the priority it's not a good example at all here but i'll just use yours here the few pixels that i have but this one here would kind of slide underneath and the upper lip will be the dominant one will be laying on top of it so they go to the same point you know they go to the side of the corner of the mouth but one is above the other one so here for example this one would take a little bit more space the lower lip the lower lip would kind of slide on it if you were to shade it, this one's above, this one's under. Anyways, um... Mm. Ooh. Ooh, those are good. Those are very good. <laughs> these are the things... <laughs> Weird, but these are like the things that I get the most excited about. You know, when I see, um, when I see them being solid. Because that's that's your understanding of the head volume and if you understand the head volume well you can do you can do pretty much anything any face on there and it should usually work quite well like you shouldn't have too much of a, too much of a, of a problem attaching the facial features on here which is something that I would recommend that you start doing probably like not as detailed as these maybe but, uh, but yeah something simpler like just like uh, what I recommended to, uh, I forgot. But uh, yeah, just like basic eyes, basic nose, a mouth, just so that you get used to seeing those in perspective, like the relationship between the two, when this one, how far this one is to, um, how, how close this one is to the center versus the other one, uh, what it looks like when they're in perspective like this. Okay. And you know it doesn't take too long, and it's, you can you can do a lot of trial and error this way. Um, yeah, I'll start doing that. Just clearly, those heads you got them, you got them down. Better, Sasha. Thanks for hanging. Um, very nice. Very nice. Strong job, but, but very nice. Very nice too. Um, this one here, I think, is just going to be the a little bit of perspective issue, so that uh, that right eye is a little too low. Maybe it's a little easier to see it upside down here. But uh, just to be better position, we just want to lift it up a bit. So this way, maybe you can you can measure the, the distances better without uh, without seeing the facial features and you know without that getting in the way, maybe. Uh, but always looking at kind of the bottom of the eye here to the mouth, like to the corner of the mouth. Is that a little bit, a little bit more similar now? I think I placed it a little too high. Maybe you can pixels, but um, and maybe that eye here can be pushed into its its socket a little bit more. Maybe the nose can get in the way a bit more here. Block part of the eye. Anyways, a little bit of perspective issue here, um, but still quite nice. All right, so let's take a look at this real quick here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
So it goes uh, that goes that applies also to to other types of perspectives, but always better results when you when you pull the um, the vanishing points a little bit more further apart. Uh, because then you're, you're not going to get like this crazy amount of crazy amount of distortion in the image like this for pretty much anybody that, that would look weird, you know, even though that might be technically correct. Uh, it's just very strange to look at and you would probably have to do the same thing with the character here where yeah, like she would need to probably be pushed a little bit more, so her hips a little wider and would be seeing the top of the feet a little bit more than that. Uh, would be seeing like the bottom of the chin only, so the eyes would be all the way up here, the nose would be somewhere there, about there, and chin, so... Because uh, when you think about it, you know, this line here, that indicates where the horizon is, so if she's looking straight at the horizon, she would, she would need to be looking up a bit more than that. So her face would be more like this, nose, eyes, mouth, looking, looking uh, to infinity and beyond. And then you yeah, see a lot more of the underside here, the neck, underside of the chin, all that. Here, um, just be careful of these curves here. You want to make sure that they are consistent. That should be following pretty closely. That guideline right there. But um, but it seems technically correct, at least. You know, the, the background. Uh, I think, yeah, you would just need to push her, her perspective a little bit more. Deform her a little, a little more. Uh, spherize her more because right now she looks she looks pretty normal in a very distorted environment. So that would be. But what I would recommend though is just to take the take the perspective, uh, take this environment, and then just pull the vanishing lines right now. What it is right here probably right here right here. That would pull these out a lot more. Boink. And so that's instead of having these crazy curves, then you you'll get these. More aesthetic, aesthetic curves, something that doesn't look like broken. Mm. This one here, though, ooh la la, <laughs> my god, a bunch of characters in perspective, too. Damn, yeah, that looks sick. That looks really good. Um, maybe this cat here, we would see it from, from below a bit more. So I think uh, we could see a little bit more. A little bit less of the eyes. Maybe the eyes would be a little, a little higher here. Just a little bit more of the nose. A little bit more of the chin also. Like more like this, even more than, than these ones. Because he's higher. Yeah, the lighting here, the colors, the... That's very good. Very good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe that's a little shaky. Not as, as round as it could have been. Convincing though. Yeah, that was good. Awesome stuff. Damn. That helps. Moving on to Brad's. Alright, so my first attempt to pull and to put all the anatomy together, primarily struggling with the muscles in the lower arm and how they connect um, or wrap around the bones. Feedback for those areas will be really useful as well. Okay. Yeah, those are a little tricky because they're a lot smaller muscles and so we don't and they're not really visible also like on the if you look at people it's usually gonna 
be pretty featureless, the forearms of people. Uh, you only notice them on like really, really big bodybuilders. So completely normal. But uh, these are trickier. Don't have as much visual library for them. Hmm. Overall, that looks really good. Um, so just a few tweaks, not not nothing major, but uh, like these here, you know, all your hamstrings they, they attach a little they attach a little higher on the um, on the on the hips, so it'll be like a, you know where you have like those those round rounded things. That's where it that's where it goes. <laughs> rounded things. That's the damn name for this. Uh, ta 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 is that it? Uh, yeah, the ischium, ischium of the hips. So just a little higher, so you don't want those those fibers, those, those long muscles to keep going up, up, up until it reaches the hip bone, and then the the glutes are just just laying on top of on top of that, you know, minding their own business, just a different layer. So but these continue high enough, like all the way up here, almost. It's just that the glutes will block the view. Yeah, so in here, uh, let me grab, I'm trying to find like a bodybuilder image so that we can clearly see all the different uh, bodybuilder forearm. See what we can find here. Mm. Mm. Maybe that would do. All right. <clears throat> Enter. All right, all right. So, yeah. So, seen from the back here, um, you're gonna get mostly, yeah. You'll you'll be mostly seeing the um, the triceps, a little bit of the, usually a little bit of the brachialis, a little bit of the bicep as well, um, because usually the triceps are a little bit more towards the back, less towards the side. So, let's see. You have your, your shoulder here. Your Triceps and go something like this. So then you get the brachialis maybe poking through here and then the bicep maybe a little bit in front as well. The three layers here of the arm. Because from this angle you should be able to see it part of it, especially if he's got you know triceps that are this big. And so instead you'll kind of just rotate this whole mass that way a bit. Uh, around around the humerus um, and then go into the elbow and then here you're gonna get a little bit of a triangle I uh, forget the name of that one What's that called? Yeah. a little tri triangular one Mm -hmm. 
Always, always, when you forget the name, always look it up. The, 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 Un uh, Anconius, Anconius. That little, little triangle here. Filling the gap. So then you're gonna have your brachial radialis group here. So what you have there, you're gonna be a big, uh, big set of double muscle going towards the, the thumb. Um, so in this case, you know, it would kind of wrap up towards the inside of the, the inside of the arm. So you get the rest of the forearm here. All your uh, flexor muscles, and then the thumb on the inside here. Why is my brush getting smaller? But every stroke, there we go. Um, and so, yeah. So elbow here, a little bit of a gap between the, the flexor muscles and the extensor muscles on top of the arm here. Should change colors, huh? Tensor muscles, flexor muscle, and then right down the middle of that, you're gonna get your ulna, kind of sandwiched in between. So yeah, looking at your stuff here, pretty damn close. It's just uh, maybe just the mass is a little a little bit missing, but uh, flexor muscles here on the inside. What color could stand out against this mm, turquoise, maybe? Flexor muscles, extensor muscles, brachioradialis group on top of it, going towards the inside of the body, because it needs to join with the thumb here. And then all of these kind of ending into tendons, going into the arm, uh, going into the hands. So. Same here again, all your flexor muscles, except this way we have a better view on to the forearm. So that's gonna be mostly what we see. Uh, and then a little bit of, mm, yeah, a little bit of the extensors here, right behind. Uh, but mostly, you know, you have the right idea. I think it's just, just making them a little bit beefier so that it matches the rest of the, uh, the muscles in here. Um, for your legs here, your hamstring is gonna be a little bigger than that. Just a little bit more mass in general. Because a leg, uh, legs are uh, uh, most like a little bit longer, like a. Uh, if you if you did a cross section of this, you know it'll be kind of kind of like this. So this would be the hamstrings in the back. That would be kind of the front of the leg. So it's a little bit longer this way. It's not like a circle. <laughs> so that's why adding a little bit of depth would solve it here. Uh, so I'm just trying to look at like the the stuff that stands out the most here because <laughs> it's an entire body. It's a lot of muscles to look at and. Don't want to take too long here, but the front looks looks pretty damn good. Yeah, maybe I would just push that bicep towards the towards the body a bit more, towards the uh, the chest muscle, so that it can kind of slide like comfortably slide underneath it. And then here, your brachialis, brachialis, bicep, and then tricep in the back. Um, but, uh, yeah, the biggest, the biggest thing here would be to, uh, just make sure that your, your muscles don't get too small in the forearms, you know, the forearms still a massive, uh, not massive, but still a pretty big group of muscles compared to the upper arm. Um, uh, as you can see here, you know, it's got a, it's got a lot of thickness in here. Um, but mostly right. And, uh, yeah, everything else just a little bit, a little bit more thickness in the legs. Uh, essentially making the the upper leg a bit longer so having it you know having it go toward um, having it go towards the uh, the pelvis a little bit more or having it reach the pelvis 
actually reached a pelvis and I'm struggling with my words, man. Um, but yeah, it's just like this stuff here, like having to go high enough because uh, because the pelvis is a little higher than that, right? So it's more like this here. So it needs to attach it all the way up there, so it needs to reach. And then just the glutes are on top, blocking the view. Same idea here, make sure things go high enough to reach the pelvis. Um, yeah, the next one would be very, very good to, to do the same exercise, but on a real skeleton, so that you're sure that, you know, proportions are, are on point. Uh, but yeah, very good study, Brad. Um, yeah, it's a really good, really good place to be because now it's just uh, the, it's the small stuff, right? It's just fine tuning to make sure everything looks, looks the way that it should, but all the muscles are there. Um, in the right spot, mostly. So, very impressive. Well, that helps. It's a little, a little over the place, all over the place. The feedback, but uh, hope that still helped. All right, Vika. Dun, 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 dun. Hello. Obviously, but uh, damn it, looks good. All right, what do you gotta say? Um, it was a good week. I hope you had a good week too. So I recall you saying that it's okay to post over. Yep. So there you go. Let me know what could have been done better with the design, composition, storytelling, etc. All right, what could have been better? Ooh. Beautiful image. Very, very nice. Uh, good balance. There's a lot of stuff to look at here, so it's, it's very entertaining to look at. Um, it's very, very nice render. Nice separation between the different materials. Uh, Um, so, um, this could be a professional piece, except small details, tiny things. Um, and it's just, it's going to be tiny things with the, the anatomy. It kind of proportions a little bit, but, uh, so the first thing that's, you know, that I'm kind of noticing here would be the, uh, like the thickness of this leg in comparison to that one. It's not so much that, like, they could be the same size, you know? Maybe they are. And that's just kind of this huge chunk that's on top of it. It's, it's just that we can't see the edge of that, that leg. And so the brain kind of fills the gap and tells us that, all right, so it probably continues like this. You know, if this thing's on top of the leg, probably means that she's got a big, nice thick leg. And then you look at the other one, like, hmm, that, that other one's a little too skinny in comparison. So that leg proportion, I think it's a bit, a bit bigger to fit the other one. The hands are a little small too. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm looking at the, uh, the length of the arm with the foreshortening and everything. Uh, It's probably fine, you know. It's it's probably accurate, is what I mean. But uh, but because she's wearing such such bulky armor, especially right around her wrist, you know, you 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 can't help but but compare the two now because you have this big mass ne next to the hand, and the hand looks pretty small in comparison. That is just like that that relationship between the two that makes them feel a little too small, even though that they might not be. Yeah, and that one's also, I mean, it's it's foreshortened, so it's all not foreshortened, but it's in, in the distance, so it looks it looks even smaller. Um, I think they look in proportion. It's just 
maybe like 10% bigger, 20% bigger, but solve it like bigger than they would be in reality. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because yeah, if I look at the model, yeah, those hands look good here. So clearly they're big enough. I think it's just, it's one of those things that you would have, that I, at least I would have adjusted um, just to make the illustration work a little bit better. Just, I'm nitpicking. Obviously, that's all I'll be doing for this feedback session. Uh, but hands, hands stood out as being quite small, even though they're not, it's just, it just looks small. Um, the design though was awesome. Really, really cool design. It gets like super tricky, you know, to um, to get feedback to a piece like this when when everything kind of works together. Because the second that you change a little bit of something, that's gonna mess up the, the composition for other things. Um, I feel like probably you could have gotten a little bit more contrasts uh, <clears throat> to help feature the character better. I mean, it's still it's still there, you no, know, it's still working quite well, but. Um, but in some areas here, like the leg there, uh, with the shading on the side of the leg, it's start to blend maybe a little bit with the background. Like I'm not even sure what I what I would change here, but maybe brighten this area of the background. Let's try it. so the characters pop even more. Adjusting the brightness of the lighting, like, uh, and, and maybe something extra, like on this side here. Like, yeah, I, I wouldn't add much, you know. I, I don't think I would add anything, uh, but maybe adjusting the lighting a little bit, because uh, you don't want to bring too much attention to this corner. And maybe like that one here, like the red, super close to the edge of the canvas. <laughs> Maybe it would work better if it was a little higher. But yeah, like back here, I think it would be just like some backlight, but just so that there's there's something interesting here. Not super interesting, but just, you know, we travel all the way, all the way from the character over there. Do, 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 here, and then, and then there's not much else so that we go back. Not necessarily a bad thing, but maybe, maybe, like the side of these monitors, maybe there's like an, another backlight there. Maybe this is like the, the warmer corner. Mm. Maybe it's a terrible idea. Maybe instead, just the top of the, top of these. It's just like, I don't understand what's happening here. So that's that's the only thing that's bugging me right now. I don't know the, the volumes that, that are at play back there. 
So maybe just yeah, kick kick the highlight just a bit on on some of the faces. Maybe same idea. Mm -hmm. Um, and the last thing I'll say, I guess, because <laughs> I mean, there's really not a whole lot to point out here. Um, but um, but this leg there, like right now, I don't know why, but like when I look at this this uh, this shape here, it feels like it's coming towards me. It's almost like the foot is, yeah, you know, like you have this foot back here, you know, heel, toes, and that one feels like the heels are like there, and the toes are coming towards me for some reason. Like the knee indicates a different direction. So the knee in the case that you know the foot will be going that way instead this way uh, so maybe it's just like the design here of the uh the plate on the the side of the side of the leg also maybe the mm, yeah what is it is it it is coming towards us huh or is it the back of it oh uh, so that's that would be the heel right here Mm, I see, I see. Yeah, something with the perspective going on there. So, the, so that's the back of the leg. It's just weird that you would see kind of like the top of the leg here and then the back of the leg there. That probably hurts a bit. So yeah, something with uh, something something going on here. Um. I think the most the most straightforward thing to do with this would be to just have the leg like uh, looking to the side, almost like we we have a side view of that thing here, like that thing there. If you just slapped it here, like we're seeing it, we're seeing it flat. I think that would work better with the uh, with the knee. <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to deform this properly, but yeah, no, screw that. Yeah, if you had like this thing here, so we see we're essentially seeing the side of the calf here, so the front of the leg, the front of the leg would be all of this, front, front, front. The toes, uh, I can't see them here, but I'm guessing it go, it would go something like this, and that would be the heel back there. And so whatever that is on the inside of the leg, maybe maybe you find it here also on the outside. Uh, but that would be kind of the side of the leg. So that's the knee facing forward. Here we have the inside of the leg, and here we have the outside of the leg. And, uh, and, and, and... That's about it. I don't know, like I see some, some cool details back here. Maybe, maybe you can grind it up. Mm. Don't want, don't want to take attention away from, from the main character. But man, the so say this image, so much detail, so much polish. So shiny. You, um, you're a killer, Vika. <laughs> okay, so if that's it, yeah. So if that's the position, then like this is confusing, you know, because you have the same lights back here, and this one, this one appears to be on the heel, you know, facing backwards. And then you see that same light right here. Or maybe... Huh? Maybe I didn't understand what you just said. But like... Um, yeah, like the way that I would place this for, for it to work with the upper leg is... Uh, the knee's fine here, but like that thing right there, instead it would go right here. So it would be on this side here, like the, the little thing with the the yellow spikes. And then that light here that seems to be 
on the hill, it would be back there instead, right? And so you would have like that middle plate here, kind of separating the front and the back. And here you would have the front of the boots, there you would have the back of the boots. That makes sense. But yeah. Let's, uh, let's take a short break. Uh, we'll be right back. Like, uh, not too long. Not as long as last time. Uh, <laughs> try not to get bit this time. And uh, be right back in like eight minute ish. And uh, we will be resuming with Peyton. After these short messages, click. Okay, okay, on continue. <clears throat> well, let's uh, resume with Peyton. All right, what do we have here? How are we doing? Yeah. Making good progress. All right, so what's up, Peyton? So I've gone a little crazy with this piece and got it done in three days. Mm. I want to try and include elements from the characters that most impacted the characters in uh, the character in this series. It was a hard, uh, it was hard to try and make his suit not look crazy colorful. Mmm. Mmm. That looks good. All right. <clears throat> That's a really cool piece. I love like I keep staring at uh, I keep staring at this this area here. It's like something so like you can feel the sun. You can't see it though. It's maybe a little weird. Cause you feel like it's coming from this side, right? <clears throat> Otherwise, you wouldn't have the the highlight on his arm. Maybe have it a little bit more intense on that side to help reinforce that lighting. Um. Overlay, where are you? There we go. Because he's clearly somewhat backlit. A little bit more on that side. Mm. Yeah, if anything, I would just push that some more. That's such a sick lighting. Uh, like, the kind of stuff here that you have on the arm. Probably a little bit more of that here as well. You know, the sun is very bright, and so regardless of the material, almost almost certain that it's going to look about the same brightness, like that highlight at least. So whether it's on the pants or on something else, here you could use, you can use that highlight to indicate like different volumes, a different fold in the pants, maybe like suggest some of these. This looks so good, like a, almost like a 3D model. So I would just push that light first, because um, the main issue with this image is that the, in some areas at least, the character kind of gets lost in the background, uh, like this area being a good example of that. So that's why you know I was kind of punching up the, um, bringing up the the brightness here on the outside, uh, on the silhouette of the pants, so that you get you get that contrast. On this side, I mean, you could use the sky color, you know, it's a nice, nice uh, purple color that you could have here. You know, it's still, there's still a bit of light outside. It's still, um, the sky still has, still acts as a light source. And so you can have some of that maybe. 
brightening up those darker shadows. Um, but if not, if you want to keep it a little darker, uh, yeah, maybe just something back here. Like the grass could just be a little lighter, kind of what it is on the other side here. So that's we don't lose those pants. Those pants don't disappear. Same thing on the other side too. Um, and then, uh, and then I would just kind of carry that that lighting, you know, throughout the uh, the rest of the background. So you have like these little hills here that are facing the sun a little more directly. These ones that are not. Um, maybe make them a little brighter. That it feels even more 3D. Um, but yeah, anyway, so like design wise, really cool armor. Uh, shape language is pretty consistent, like you're reusing a lot of the same similar lines, similar shapes. Good job, about, good job with that. Um, I feel like I would probably make this a little bit bigger, like the thing around his neck, just because right now mm, maybe doesn't read as well. Um, like maybe doesn't read like it's a like a circle that goes around. Maybe it could be like a hair attachment, or maybe it could be something in her in, in her in his back, you know, that kind of sticks out. So that's not super clear. So maybe if you just make it thicker, so that you have more. Uh, more space just to, to indicate what the lighting is on that on that thing. Um, maybe that would make it easier. Maybe you can like when it rotates here, you can see the inside. The inside here is a little darker. So we really like give it more of a just more volume essentially, and have it connect in a visible is a visible fashion towards the front here, so that we know that it's actually you know kind of wrapping around, and probably see it here on that side as well. Um, yeah, cool design. I mean, um, the the last thing it would be just kind of the brightness overall, like the brightness of these effects. I think it's maybe a little overwhelming. Like there's too much of it, and so like I would, I would maybe like keep it for the eyes. So whatever is the most important, like your, the eyes and the horns, if that's the most important, like you want people to look at that first, uh, then go with that, keep it the way it is, and then maybe reduce the brightness, the intensity on, on everything else. So I think maybe this is not as intense in, in comparison to the, uh, to the eyes. Instead of turning to white, like white in terms of temperatures, white is the the most um, the 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 hottest. Or is it blue? Maybe blue is hottest even. No, white is white is the hottest. And you can you, you can just imagine like metals, you know, the the different colors that a metal will go through as you warm it up. And so first it'll be you know, like that that red color, and then it becomes redder and redder, and then more orange, and then more yellow, and then eventually white when it's super super hot. So, you know, you can still make it seem very hot by just having it be um, a, a light orange. Like a really hot metal would be. And then the glow around the fingers would, would then sell that, that it's actually radiating light. Glow around it. Make it 
feel hot. So yeah, that's a little too saturated, but but I would do something like that, you know, for everything that's not the eyes, everything that's not meant to be as intense. Otherwise, otherwise you have all these things that are that are really really bright, they're kind of competing for attention. So it just in relation to one another, just having kind of a a, a ladder system, you know. So one that's the at, one's at the top, and then the other one's just a little bit less and less and less intense as you go away from that 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 number one spot, the eyes. Like on arm here, maybe, maybe those back here are not as not as not as a uh, not as white. Maybe it's like more red, like like lava. Hasn't gotten to the hasn't gotten that hot yet. Yeah, Peyton. So just a couple things, but um, man, that was really good. Really good job with that. And since like you have all this light, um, like the face feels strangely not lit, you know, like you would probably get a lot of a lot of light here on the inside, like because these hands are on fire, so like that would probably result in a little bit of light on the chin and like under the side, under the lips here, on the upper lips, under the nose, under the cheeks here, under the neck. On the neck itself, you know, I just warm this up a lot. Like it's, it's receiving the light, and uh, the reflection here probably don't make it as as uh, as intense as the um, as the light itself. It's just a reflection after all. Maybe just a little, a little bit less, so you maintain kind of the colors. It's just much brighter than they used to be. Yeah, just making sure that you don't overuse like colors that are um, values that are too bright, especially when you have when you want to have things that are much brighter than others. But man, that's a really 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 impressive illustration. So beautiful colors too. Didn't mention anything about that, but yeah, colors in here are sick. Really nice. <laughs> I can't I can't move on to the next one yet. Uh, maybe a little bit of an atmospheric perspective would, uh, would be super nice here. Maybe that'd be enough to just make the pants stand out some more. Let's try that. Yeah, just maybe a little, a little more of that. Like it's more humid, there's more humidity, uh, humidity in the air. More, um, a little foggier. Let's see. Couple suggestions. What the hell, Spaden? So this week I've been doing more color and light studies and going through some assignments and personal studies too, such as painting more um, more rocks and trying to make the colors pop. Uh, and painting, coloring someone else's line work. Mm, good practice. So I feel like I'm getting better at painting, doing these exercises, but it's quite difficult, especially the rock and human paintings. I feel like both are hard, but I'd appreciate feedback on the painting of the girl, as the planes of the face feel off in the clothing too. Looks good. Right, the rocks. Oh yeah, here we go. So um, it's gonna be texture again. So very similar to what, I, to what I, I did last week. I would probably, you know, this is all texture work, you know? So first thing that you should do is just look at the overall image. Like what does this look look like as a simple volume? It's like a, a rounded box. And so, but yeah, you identified all the you know, the volume, you identify the volume quite well. So yeah, all of that side is a little darker in the shadows and the top here is receiving a little bit more light. Although in this case, it's a little bit more rounded. So maybe you would have a little bit more of a softer transition here. Um, but other than that, pretty close, you know, so 
uh, I will just clean this up so that you don't have too much details because most of this is just surface detail. It's just, uh, you know, there aren't some big structural um, details to worry about. Maybe there's a crack here, but that's about it. So, yeah, shaded kind of overall. It's a little lighter up here, a little lighter down there. Kind of overall shading, super simple shading. And then uh, use a use a textured brush to add the details. I don't know that there's anybody that I know that would do something different because it's just it's way simpler. You know, it allows you especially to uh, when you do it from imagination to build an entire scene like this, which is simple shading, super, super simple. You know, nothing, nothing too complicated. You make sure that everything looks nice. That's laid out nice. And once that's like, yes, I'm good with that. Then you slap on all these details and that's going to be a lot of brushwork, a lot of texture, like overlays and, and all that stuff. But the base is usually, usually pretty stale. Um, a lot staler than what you have here. It's almost like you use a soft brush for most of this stuff. Because all those details, they're not going to come, you're not going to really come across once you have, the, once you do the, the detail pass, like the texture pass. So we're just going to over... Overall, it's a little darker up here. It looks a little dirtier. Good old soft brush does the trick. Uh, yeah, a little bit more lights up here, maybe. And then, and then you look at this this kind of texture here. What is this? Mm, once again, you could just grab that, you know, and create a new brush out of it. Maybe I still have it. That's from the other time. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Slamming on my on my tablet. Not even the right brush, but you know, it's starting to, to look like something. Anyway, that would kind of be the process. So you start with like super simple base and then you add the details on top. Like I wouldn't try to paint in the details with like a, you know, like a, unless they're really big, like unless they're, they're structural details, like, you know, this big crack here. Yes, you should definitely paint that in. But for everything else, everything on surface stuff, don't even, don't even think about it. Just do that later. Yeah, let's take a look at this one here. Yeah, it's a nice clean sketch to uh, to work off of. Yeah, so I'm I'm glad that you identified, you know, kind of the issue initially, uh, without having me to, without me having to say anything. So good eye, and yes, you're right. So the face is a little, a little a little flat. So what to think about, you know, in terms of the uh, uh, the facial planes. Especially for a character like this, it's a little bit more simple. Um, it's going to be maybe... Um, so the size here, the size of the jaw, that's going to be a different plane. And of course, it's not going to be like clear cut like this. It'll be more of a transition between the different, the different faces, but... So the sides, top of the cheek here, side of the um, the temple, and then going to the rest of the skull. So you can kind of do that the same way on both sides, and then <clears throat> and then and then. Here, somewhere in there, mouth, 
eyes. Um, looks like a monkey, but that's kind of what I think about, you know, for like a super simple character like this. So like the side here is mostly going to be shaded the same way. That's what this means. Uh, so, and then of course, you know, it wouldn't be as clear cut. Like I said, it'd be more of a, more of a blur between all of that stuff. A lot more blurry, a lot more. Um, but approximately that's where the highlights would be. And that's why the shadows would be. So right down the middle here as the, uh, you know, as the faces, like uh, <laughs> as this volume here, uh, right below the four, right below the eye, right below the eyebrows starts to go towards the inside of the face. I like to add a little bit of, a little bit of highlight there and not highlight, a little bit of a shadow here. Makes the forehead feels more round. Um, round the nose, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, on the side of the face here, so you'll want all of that to be a little darker. So let's do it like hard first. And then we'll soften it out. And I would use like a, a, a warmer color for your shadows. Something that's a little more saturated. And it'll look nicer. something like this and then blend away and so yeah, if you want her to be like more rounded a little softer you can follow follow these lines more or less but uh very close i mean the the main issue here was really the you know the head volume as a whole really didn't have much shadow so it's pretty flat uh so it's really just that that you want to that you want to create first and then after that you draw the features on top of that um so that's kind of what i was trying to to get back here That you have to keep in mind also you know when you use a line art for somebody else is that they might have screwed up their their folds so you don't know if they're right or not unless you can do the same thing obviously um so how accurate is this not bad not bad but it's a little, a uh, little weird, a little, like what, what's going on here? You know, like what is this? Is that her? Like, is that her breast or what? Is this it? Like she's, she's stacked. Or is that just, just a random fold because there's some wind? Or mm -hmm. so, um, but once again, overall, like I would shade this kind of uh, super softly without uh, without fold or anything like that just kind of what her body would be like if she were kind of naked so the bottom of the shirt here is going to be a little darker around the breast here or whatever you know. i don't know if she's got any but even if she didn't even if she was pretty flat there would still be muscles here like the change of direction in the thoracic in the um the rib cage so rib cage here from the side view but legs you know so this part here is what we're looking at this is where the highlight is and then down there it's not receiving the light as much so it's going to be a little darker so i would start here first you know something super simple like this and then yeah and then you can you can add some folds in here if you want i'm 
maybe it's got like a baggy shirt or something. Some some slack in there. So same logic, you know, these sleeves are mostly cylindrical, so I would just start with shading a simple cylinder. And after that, you just uh, you just zoom in, go to the medium size details, aka the folds, and then start to, to add those folds. But on the actually, on the already shaded kind of main volume. The house. Moving on to Brett's. Brett! Oh, snap. Oh, that was you. Ooh, hello. Yeah, I didn't even look at the names when I... When I was voting for these, but... God damn, dude, that's... One thing that I did think is that this is a sick concept. <laughs> so... I'm so stoked to see that it was you. Bruh. Bruh. Yummy, yum, 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 yum. My God, dude. The level up is just crazy. Crazy. Such a cool design. So it's been a while and I hope you're doing well. Yeah, man. Uh, I saw other artwork submissions this week, so I assume they're okay. Uh, they're okay to put up for feedback. So just looking for general critique on any elements you find lacking. Looking back on it now, there's so much that could be improved. So don't go easy on it. All right. Well, uh, I mean, there's so many good qualities about this paint. Like just your, your material treatment is crazy good. Like these metals, just the reflections on the metals. Oh man, it must have been fun. Hell yeah. There's the lighting everywhere. There's the effects also is super cool. Like, look at these particles, man. What the hell? Sick. You're sick, man. <laughs> um Right, so the main the main uh the main feedback, to be honest, would be lighting. So like kind of overall lighting. So I think it would have been so cool if you had the, I mean, it's already like beautiful, beautiful painting. So let's not, let's not forget that. But uh, the, I can feel like I would almost like want a spotlight somewhere around here. Just so that we can, we can see this better without having to zoom in. Because right now, if you look at this piece quickly, um, I feel like most people will miss a lot of those details. Like people don't do this, you know, like they don't, <laughs> they're not, most people don't do this. They don't zoom in and look at all those details and drool. Uh, instead, they'll just look at this whole thing. And be like, hmm, take it in as, as it is. All right, move on to the next one. That's cool. But I feel like you're, by doing that, like, by having this area a little too dark, I think people are going to miss a lot, a lot of the goodness that you have painted in here. So the backlight here, awesome. Really, really cool. In the way that, yeah, 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 yeah. All the yeses, all that stuff here. Beautiful. Um, but I would all, like, if it were me, like, I would have definitely put a, either, a, uh, like, something here that can reflect lights or or just like light on the ground here. Maybe it's a little bit brighter on these rocks. Maybe these rocks are a little, a little bit more reflective or something. And then have that light, some of that warm light reflected here on her body that we can, we can kind of light up some of this stuff. I don't know, it's a little tricky to do all. To do it to do it kind of uh, overall without um, painting any details, but let's try. 
Mm. What could it be? What could it be? Maybe it's some of that, like that blue stuff here. Maybe it's just like some just some light bleeding here. Mm. Yeah, it's like no easy way to to apply it to everything, but but what I mean is, you know, that kind of stuff, like lighting up this area here, somehow. can be lit from by that light source as well. Kind of light coming from below. and like bringing in a little bit of orange too because you have yellow in here um to act as like the the warmer color but the yellow is very it's a very cold yellow very desaturated yeah so by having a little bit a little bit more warmth around here like it would again we're attracted by warmth right it's it's just a genetic thing uh, and so by having a little bit more warmth around here like that would be kind of the first thing that we see her face like this area here and then we would kind of make our way around the painting from there right now i feel like the the initial read is more like around here so you have such high contrast here it goes from kind of like this like it follows the the effects almost maybe also a way to, to push back the the background here because the boot blends it blends in with uh with it maybe a, a bit too much Lighting that foot a bit better. Mm. So yeah, I don't know exactly what kind of light source you know you could have in here. Uh, I don't know who she's fighting exactly, but um, yeah, having I don't know maybe it's like the the opponent's magical things, magical particles that are sliding her up. Uh, yeah, I feel like all of these are getting a little bit more contrast here on the inside of the body. I think that would have that would have been like the the cherry on the cake. I don't, I don't know. I'm saying this. It's already it's already a crazy image. Um, but just to balance it a little bit better with warmer colors, a little bit more light, so that we can appreciate all the details. That would be kind of the extent of it. Because yeah, everything else, man, you aced it. Sick looking, man. You should be proud of this. You'll be working in the industry not not long from now, <laughs> with with paintings like this. God damn, man. Um, I was not anywhere near as good when I got a job. So, there you go. All right, Curtis. There are some characters I designed the other day. My initial inspiration for these characters were Death and War of the Four Horsemen. And sorry, just gonna go back again. A lot of it also is just the uh, your your brushwork. You know, like. Uh, it's pretty efficient, at least, at least it seems this way. And like the, yeah, just the textured brush that you use, the, yeah, it's advanced stuff. Damn. Um, so here are some characters I designed the other day. My initial inspiration for these characters were Death and War of the Four Horsemen. I think Death's pretty obvious, but I'm probably going to add some, or maybe a lot, of weapons war if I decide to go further with these concepts. I've got some ideas for pestilence, but I'm kind of at a loss when it comes to turning famine to an aesthetically pleasing character. <laughs> yeah. hmm. Anyways, I recently watched uh, I recently watched the color lights video, so I'd be excuse me, I'd be interested in hearing what you think of the colors I've picked as well as any thoughts you have on the design in general. Alright, man. She reminds me of a 
what is it? Is it Yoko in uh, Grand Lagan? Tengen Topa Grand Lagan. Like the, yeah, a little bit like the exposed legs, although she's not exposed. But yeah, man, love it. Beautiful character. Can't go wrong with uh, with triads. So, although one could argue it's more a complementary color, but eh, skin yellow or um, you get a little bit of yellow here too. Yellow accents, yeah, it's definitely triad. That's more um, a little bit more analogous of a color palette. Different shades of blues and reds and pinks and purples. Um, love the colors. Really, really nice. Um, would I change anything in here? Yeah, I wouldn't change anything with this character. That character looks awesome. Very well balanced. Um, focal point, very, very effective. Clearly here. Uh, still, you get a little bit of hints of other colors, and so like my eye still travels everywhere. But uh, but still, that was kind of the first the first glance. So good job. With this one, um, yeah, pretty similar. I mean, it's always a little tricky when you don't see the eyes, you know, because then that's big focal point that you don't have anymore, or even like it, in terms of like weights, you know, if it were like a visual weight, she if she, if you could see her face. That would be the amount of weight that she's that this area has. But now since you can't see the eyes, it's like it draws by a lot. It becomes a lot weaker. And so I feel like maybe you would need to compensate with a bunch of other stuff. Maybe not a bunch, but a, a few other things. Like uh, maybe making that that flower a little bit more. Yeah, I think I think you had the right idea, though. Like this. That's a nice touch. The, the blue lipstick. Two colors that we don't that we don't find anywhere else in here, so kind of stands out. As I would just go a little heavier on it. So it's very clear that this is blue. Maybe it could be something in her in her. I mean, maybe the maybe that could be blue too. I would go for that. Because it's it's bold, it's, uh, it's obvious. Um, almost looks like eyes now, you know, like she's wearing glasses or something. So yeah, but, but with some fold in here, maybe that maybe that be that be good. Either that or uh, something in her hair, like some some bands to hold her hair or something. I would just sprinkle a little bit more blue there. I think that's definitely the right direction. And yeah, from here, add a little bit of a gradient and ship it. That's that's really good. Multiply. Zoom. Yeah, not a whole lot to say about these Curtis. Um, I think these are on point. Like the in the you know previous feedback usually has to do with uh, the focal point not being really, really well like isolated. But uh, that's definitely not a problem here. A little more with that one, but yeah, I think you just splash a little bit more blue around the around her face, and that'll that'll solve it. And then design wise. I like the design a lot. Um, like maybe, like, 
like shape language wise like i think she, i think she's fine because she's a little bit more uh not as designed in a way <laughs> uh she's wearing like more like regular clothes um so like that looks familiar that looks like something that yeah that could that could totally exist so that's what i mean less design it's just like stuff that that you know i've I've seen before. It's just like that. That can totally be a real, a real jacket. She could totally wear something like this, uh, and it just fits nicely together. Helped by the colors. In her case, uh, she's a little bit more designed in the sense that she's got like some some patterns now that that she could potentially repeat. She's got different different um, yeah shape language elements. So. Like these. Yeah, these are going to be repeated on the on the back as well. Like I would find maybe opportunities for for other other like chevrons like this to um, to exist on the design, or or take these out and and go for the the more like curly ornaments ornamental designs like this uh, instead, and just just do that. You know, so nothing angular, nothing like this. Instead, it's going to be these these nicely uh, in. These nice intricate little details. So I would go, I would go one or the other because they're pretty different. You know, one is very angular, the other one's nice and organic. So I would just settle for one. And then, so if you choose like these ones here, uh, maybe do something like this on on her on her shirt instead maybe something a little bit more angular like more uh, modern designs you have that that nice triangle shape here too so that's nice yeah maybe you could have some some patterns on here i'm not saying i prefer i prefer the shape i think the the or the um the ornamented ornamental lure <laughs> <laughs> um, like these details, these smaller details. I think those are really nice too. But yeah, I would just push one or the other. Take a little more. Oh, that helps. Very nice designs. Super cool character. Characters. All right, moving on. To Santi. Awesome, welcome. Welcome, this is your first submission. Um, so the feedback. So alright, alright. So I got two perspective one of the first time, so I'm practicing perspective here with two different shots of a security camera. I was wondering if I got the perspective lines right as well as as if the girl was positioned correctly before I move on to actually giving this line art some colors. Also, anything else you see wrong for me to improve upon would be great. So I use my room as a reference for the base outline of the room. Oh, dummy, and somehow got rid of the baselines I used before I started. No worries. Messy bed. No worries. Mine is also messy, so. <laughs> uh, alright, alright, alright. So. No worries about the lines. We can recreate those real quick. So, let's see. Vanishing lines pretty far. So that would be the horizon right here. That's actually, well, you have three point perspective in this case. So you went a little further <laughs> than the scope of this than the scope of this exercise. That's um, that's in the next term. Because you have another one here, going towards the bottom. So you got three point perspective room. So that's the uh, the vanishing point for the height, and this actually, yeah, there's something a little something a little off in here. So why is that? Maybe it's just because it's rotated. So yeah, one thing to keep in mind, you know, like looking at this at this image here, whatever photo that you take of, of real life, you know, of a room, it's always going to be in three-point perspective, because um, that's that's what we see. That's that's normal. 
Um, two point perspective is just, it's a perspective that's more limited and one point perspective is even, even more limited than that. And um, three point perspective means that you're gonna have the horizon, two vanishing points on that horizon, you know? So let's say you were to trace a box that's floating, do something like this. Now I have a box, box, box. Find the height of the box. Uh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> do that again, a little more cleanly. Top of the box. And face a bit. And then, and then. Why am I doing this? I'm there so that's a box in three point uh, and two point perspective why two because the vertical lines all the vertical lines are parallel they don't converge anywhere they're just they just go on forever down and up and they never touch so but that's not reality like in real life we don't see that really so and what you did though is three point perspective. So now instead of having those, those uh, vertical lines be parallel, now they're gonna be driven by a vanishing point. So maybe this vanishing point up here. And so everything that's vertical, instead of going straight up, now it's gonna go towards that point. So that line here, that line there, and that line here. So now you end up with a different box. A box that's like that. And that's what your room is mm, that's straight more or less all right so now different box not quite the same three point perspective two point perspective so yeah when you draw uh, when you when you go from a room like this always going to be this one here so uh with that out of the way <laughs> um now you know there's a little bit of a tilt to the image as well so you're gonna want to straighten that out so that you can find where the horizon is because right now the horizon is probably probably a little bit tilted this way Oops. probably a little a little bit tilted not quite straight so i should start from this here so initially we'll want to Make sense of this image first. See what's happening here. Where are the vanishing points in here um, based on that photo? So let me get this here out of the way a little bit. Okay, there we go. Do that again. So that's one wall. Uh, the floor, I mm, can't really see it, but I can use something else that's kind of straight. Um, yeah, the bed here. Let's use that to figure out where those two merge. And where they merge, where is it? Here, approximately. So that's going to be the first vanishing line, uh, first vanishing point. And also that is going to be... Uh, the first point to for the horizon. So that point here lands on the horizon always. It's just the it's just the the, the vertical vanishing point that's not gonna land on the horizon. It'll go it'll be be uh, below or above it. Um, and then let's keep going. Uh, so we want to find out the other vanishing point now. So we have the first one here, and then we can use the bed to find out the other one. It should touch the horizon here. So when it touches, that's the horizon line right there and now you can see also that the image is a little tilted right so if you want to straighten out the horizon to work off something that's a little bit easier to deal with you can go like this trying to make that line straight here so now we straightened out your room more or less uh, 
And now we can find out where the other vanishing point is, the third one. Let's mark it in red. And we can start with the corners of your wall here. Let's use that one here again. And then where they meet, there's gonna be a third vanishing point like somewhere down here. And so for anything that's vertical, everything should line up with this here. So if you look at your posters here, like the little uh, sound pads, your monitors right here, different monitors, everything lines up with that line now. So that's your, um, that's your vertical vanishing point. So yeah, so without knowing, you kind of create a, created a three point perspective room. That's how you find things in here. So, you know, you have a lot of straight lines, so it's, it was a little easier. But uh, yeah, if you want to recreate that now, you would just start with these vanishing points and then kind of just go to town and then recreate it. Create a box for your room and then create, you know, redraw everything that's inside. Uh, but let's check if you, if you made mistakes in here. Because, um, and probably, so I'm looking at these walls here. Yeah, that's probably a little too. Yeah, but I'm not even going to check because, yeah, with just the, the naked eye, like there's this, everything's still a little, uh, little wobbly in here. It looks good though, like at first glance, you know, you don't really notice it, but uh, it's not constructed properly. So um, the right way to do it, you know, would be to start with the horizon line. That's where, that's where the, uh, that's where the horizon is. And then you place your two vanishing points. Only two first. I mean, you can start with one even if that's all too complicated, uh, but two vanishing points here. And then if you were to recreate your room approximately, Like this you would go something like that so let's recreate the walls so maybe this is the back corner here so that corner uh, so that's gonna be this wall right here and then where your window is that's gonna be that wall right here you can have your, your window right there again all these lines here you know whenever you trace a line it should all go to one vanishing point so for, now let's draw let's draw the bed so the bed's going to be just a big box so we can start with uh, the height of that box maybe it's going to be this high so now i can trace from here Line to find out the corner of your desk of your of your bed this corner here so maybe right there and then we want to find out the depth of that bed so we can we have the, the the corner here for that box we can just go towards the vanishing point again and where it touches the wall let's say here then that's your bed Right, so now we had uh, basically, you know, on the floor looking up. Um, but that's kind of how you build you build it up using two uh, two point perspective. So just keeping in mind that everything that's vertical should always be parallel. There's no angle to it, um, and the all the other lines, all the horizontal lines that will go to either um, of those vanishing lines, vanishing points. So if I were you, just so that, you know, you see kind of the, um, the different levels there, I would start with one point perspective uh, and almost like create one from scratch or like a, using a photo. A one point perspective will look something like, let me show you. like that so you 
you know, in here, everything that's horizontal here, like all these lines, like the top of these buildings, all straight. No perspective there. All straight, all straight. Uh, the lines here on the road, all straight, right? So the only the only convergent point, the only the only direction where all these lines are going is towards this point right here. So there's only one, and everything everything starts from there. So all these lines here on the road, they go from here. All those windows are gonna be lined up with that line here, top of the building right here. All these balconies up here, like the top of these buildings on the other side. Strings, not the strings, the, the cables in the air. It, it all goes towards that point. Everything else, everything that's horizontal now uh, will be parallel and everything that's vertical, you know, like these buildings also parallel. So the only, the only sense of perspective that you have is because of this one vanishing point. So I would start with something like that first so that you get a really, really good understanding of that. After that, you can add a second one. Then all horizontal lines will be, will be converging to a point, not just one of them, you know, like these will be also now going to a point. And after that, you can move on to the next one. Three point perspective. So yeah, that's a lot of perspective talk. Hope that helps. Hope that makes sense. If not, let me know. I will uh, we'll look into that a little more closely. Make sure that you get, make sure that, uh, that you understand this 100%. All right, moving on to to Shimeng. All right, so I mostly practice drawing this week, trying to really get form down in 3D space. After months of doing figure drawings every day, I can definitely feel it um, being better. Yeah, I can definitely see it getting better too. Um, so I was wondering, I'm kind of stuck right now, just studying anatomy and exploring figure drawing after, uh, after roughly five months. I know that the fundamentals of anatomy are something that I will practice for years. I think that other than anatomy, maybe perspective, I've put a decent amount of practice on most of the things in terms of uh, in term one to three. We'll start the ZBrush part of the course soon since I was always curious about 3D. Do you think I should start color and move on and move at a faster pace through the course? Is there something that you think I should work on more before moving on? Yes, yeah, so the idea, you know, like uh, you keep doing this, of course, don't stop, don't ever stop. Uh, but you can just do a little bit less as you start to do more of the, the other new things. Uh, but yeah, I just want to make sure that you don't stop doing that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's, uh, it's at least if you're interested in doing character art, uh, this is super important. And and you're getting so good. I mean, these, these are really solid, man. These are really, really nice figure drawings. Love your lines now too, like a lot of more confidence. Yeah, this is really good. Um, yeah, I think you're in a good spot to uh, to keep moving ahead and and see what happens. The idea, you know, like if it get, if it gets a little a little too complex, if you're starting to become to feel overwhelmed, then that's probably because you're moving ahead a little too fast. Uh, but as long as it's it's challenging but not overwhelming, good, keep going. And you'll see a lot of the stuff, you know, as the terms progress, uh, it's less and less focused on fundamentals and it's more, a lot more like these, uh, these more novel skills, um, like, like design, you know, it's, uh, it's a little bit more independent from the fun, although designs are fundamental, but, um, like different types of designs, you know, like different this character designs, mech designs, environment prod designs, that kind of stuff. Uh, it's all based on the same foundation. So I think those can get, could go a little faster. Um, like, these are not, they're not bad things. Like they're not bad exercises, but it's, uh, I think maybe it's a little bit more limiting in terms of what you can, what you can get out of them versus, uh, uh, 
versus trying to come up with the shading yourself as much as you can. So like, it's similar to like what you did here, almost like simplifying, same thing I was saying to, um, to somebody earlier, uh, turning all of these volumes into simpler volumes, you know, into like the leg here, it's gonna be a curvy cylinder. And how would you shade that? And then you look at what it looks like here. Ah, oh, ah, oh, okay. So that's how you shade a curvy cylinder. And and approaching it this way so that you can eventually like reuse that stuff. Because right now, you know, like you can shade this particular one from this reference. But but maybe like I'm just I'm not sure how much you're able to to take away from this and reuse somewhere else. So I'm not sure how good of an exercise. That is, if you just keep doing that, like initially, I think it's a really, really good exercise because you're, you're forced to, to look at things a lot more closely and like stuff that you've never paid attention to before. Like, what is that? Huh? What's that bump? What's that? Huh? And then, and then you realize, oh, so that, that's just the rib cage. Those are the abdominal, the abdominals. And that's how the, the light reacts on it from this particular angle. Uh, like all these things are really good to, to develop that sense of that, um, that observation skill, but but from there for it to to allow you eventually to draw this from imagination, which is the goal. Um, I think yeah, you 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 need a little bit more like analysis in between. So between this and the final result, instead of kind of looking at at this here and be like, all right, so there's a highlight here, so I'm gonna have a highlight here. This is really bright this shape here so this shape here is going to be it's going to be very bright i'm not saying that this is what you do maybe um but i would try what i would try to do is in between those two steps here like recreating essentially what we do in term one of uh, uh of the program you know when you when you draw the cylinders over a person and try to make to make them match properly so that when you hide the image it still looks like a person just made out of cylinders or in boxes um i would do that here for for her before you go, before you move on to the shading, and then before you actually work on the shading here, shade those simpler shapes first. So, real quick, you know, her torso, something like this, seen from below a little bit, uh, two legs, cylinders here going away from us, and how would you shade that when the when the light's coming from this direction? You know, and then you look at this, how it's shaded, how they did it. And then you try to to correlate the two. So, all right, so this part is the torso. The top here is a little brighter in this case. All right. Okay, okay. Then the legs here. All right, so the front of the legs is going to be a little bit brighter. The other legs in the shadow, so no light for that. And then after that, now that you understand how that works on simpler volumes, you have a better understanding of what the logic is behind it and then then you can move on to the final the final result here and, and do like all the subtle subtle like you know shade shading details and all that stuff but um, yeah Keep things fun, right? So if you're, you know, if, if this is starting to get a little, a little heavy, because <laughs> you've been you've been doing a lot of a lot of this kind of practice, so yeah, feel free to move ahead, explore new things, have fun, and uh, just make sure that you keep doing this once in a while, that you don't you don't lose it, because uh, you're progressing so much that uh, you know don't you don't want to lose that stuff, don't want to lose the momentum. Um, but yeah, have fun, enjoy uh, enjoy the rest. Right, Rui. Really. So I hope you are. Yep. I hope you're doing well too. So here are this. Uh, here's this. Uh, the, the, here's the tree city owned by my cuckoo harpies. What do you think? All black holes can be entered. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, 
a nice little island in the middle of the ocean. Hell yeah, that's that's cozy. I'd like to visit this place. Man, that's a big tree, huh? That's super cool. Yeah, like if anything, just a suggestion, but uh, might be cool, you know, to like it wouldn't look as as designed and maybe look a little bit more natural if some of these roots, you know, came all the way to the ocean. Maybe that, that'd be kind of cool. And so like the sand is not like it's not a circle around it, it's more uh, maybe different. A little bit, a little bit more messy. Just, anyways, just a, just a random thought, uh, but that looks really, really nice. Alright. Isn't that like every every kid's dream? An epic treehouse. This looks really good. So, not a whole lot that I'll say about this. Only maybe about like the leaves and maybe a little bit about the um, the lighting, it's just so that uh, you really sell the fact that it's, you know that these guys are kind of in the tree. You know, not kind of on the outside of the tree. Um, a really cool, de really cool design. Um, be it'd be it'd be really fun to see uh like if there's any do they have lights in there like things to uh things that you can see maybe because now that i've read it you know i know that you can go into the into the holes but if it's if you didn't tell me it wouldn't be clear so i wouldn't really know that these guys i mean they can enter the houses for sure you know that seems pretty obvious but to go inside the tree i don't know that i would Think they would so maybe if you add like some some lights in here and like just sign that there's something inside that it's hollow that uh that you can actually go in there what yeah it's tricky because it's kind of small but maybe like some holes are bigger like a big entrance, you know, and then and then there, there's a uh, you can see a little bit more on the inside of the tree, maybe, you know, just random. But let's say there's a there's a big hole here, and then they kind of kind of carved it out so that's almost like little stairs carved into, in, inside of the tree, and then on the inside there, maybe there's a the ground. And it kind of disappears inside. Maybe there's like. Some light here. You know, it's just something to, to indicate that maybe some people can go in here. Um, yeah, so that's for the design. I think that's pretty much it. Otherwise, it was cool. Uh, presentation wise, now the the tree, the leaves of the tree. The trunk looks epic. Uh, the leaves may be a little too pale. So, leaves are pretty dark usually. Let's go make this big dark tree. And then introduce a bunch of shadows on the underside here of the leaves. Because the leaves are gonna be blocking a bunch of the bunch of the light to a lot of these houses. So inside the tree is going to be pretty dark because all these leaves are preventing the light from entering. It's like a big, a big green cloud. And then on top of it, the sunshine. having a little bit more I mean this is super rough right obviously but having a little bit more of that like that volume in the trees in the um, not the trees but in the foliage in the, in the leaves 
allows you to yeah to, to have that depth so that you can you can feel like these people can go inside the tree otherwise it might seem more like a you know, let's say the tree is like this big shape that their house is kind of just on top of it here that's kind of what it seemed like i mean i think we understand that the trees you know that the house inside the tree but the way that it was the, the way that it was presented feels like they were more like on the outside not so much on the inside here so by having by having a little bit more depth like this um better it's super rough but um but yeah i think i would just darken the darken the leaves make them make them take up a better a bigger role um in in structuring kind of the the little village and maybe then you can have like some some branches here that are that are blocked that are in the shadows while other branches receive more of the lights. Maybe. Maybe here's a little more exposed, but then as it gets closer to the side here, you lose a little bit of that light. It's only partially, the house is just partially um, lit. And maybe these roots here are deep in the foliage, so you don't really see them. But then some of them kind of, right here, these are outside enough that they're receiving the sunlight so they're a little brighter a little warmer um just make yeah just giving the um the lights more of a presence in here and using the leaves to do that like i'm hiding a bunch of stuff you know of course i did it super quick but um but that's really the only the only place I, I would take this because yeah he did a really good job otherwise super cool man i want to visit this place i want to live there all right so mr larn hope you're good so down to business <laughs> I uh, hope you're good too. I uh, have recently begin, been given the opportunity to be looking at university learning concept art. However, my grades suck. I uh, still want to see a portfolio, so I'm planning on giving my 100% in the coming weeks on a full portfolio. They want to see still life and enemy animals and good, about, good ability to draw in strong fundamentals. So instead of teacher Mark, uh, instead of teacher Mark, can I get senior art director Mark and tear up my drawing parts? And uh, any advice on building a good portfolio around this? All right. Um, <laughs> um, so for concept art, and they want a whole lot of different things. All right. Uh, 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 um. Well. If it's for concept art, you know, if it's a legit school, they're they're good, they know what they're doing. Um, then probably, you know, don't show them that because that's not really concept art. It's just uh, it's a portrait, it's a nice illustration. Very nice, by the way. Very nice shading. Uh, I mean, it looks like a photo at this scale, so clearly you're doing something right here. But... And if you can, like, I would find a, I would try to reach out like an alumni from um, from that school. If you can, like, usually they have a list, you know, somewhere. Uh, maybe they have, they have like a public group somewhere where they used to hang out. Anyways, like, find a find a few. Like, try to reach out. Try to uh, try to ask what their what their portfolio was like when uh, when they got approved. So just so that you have an, an idea, because that's something that's easy to find for for companies, like for studios. You can just look on like on art station or whatever, uh, you look at, okay, that person works there. What's their art like? Oh, all right. So if I want to work there, I should have something similar to that. Noted. Uh, with students, a little bit, a little harder to find, but I would still, you know, try to try to look for it, try to fish for it. Um, 
so that you know and a few of them so that maybe you know not everybody's at the same level so you'll get a range of kind of what they what they accept what they don't accept um And yeah, if it's concept art, focus on concept art only. I mean, you can have a few other a few other paintings, but I would keep that to like just ten percent and under. Ninety percent of your of your portfolio should be concepts. So, you know, if you're, I don't think they they're gonna they're gonna care if it's more oriented towards characters or not or whatever, uh, or environments, you know. But uh, but you should still for yourself and eventually, you know, if you, if you're gonna work in the industry. You should tailor your portfolio towards to what, towards what you prefer. So if you like to do characters more, just do that. Have more characters in your portfolio. Um, and um, yeah, but what we go, what um, what we focus on on the program, you know, like the like 15 pieces for the final project. That's that should be pretty good. Um, but yeah, make sure they're they're concepts. They're they're, they're, they're detailed. It's it's idea that you're trying to convey, idea that you're trying that you're trying to communicate, and so make sure that you communicate well. Make sure that they they understand your ideas. Make sure that your ideas are are interesting, new, different. Um, so, a lot of strong hooks, uh, 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 a lot of just, just technical drawings, you know, like stuff that's it's not necessarily super fun to do but like turnarounds not like you know every angle but like a shot from the front shot from the back maybe some some angles that are harder to see uh in the first two and, and draw that maybe some some mechanisms how how those work how those open up how they function uh those are all like concept art stuff that uh concept art um yeah things that studios would look for and i'm guessing you know the university is any good that's also what they would look for uh, because their goal i would think is to eventually have you get a job in the art industry and so i will look at that you know look at uh yeah concept artists what they have in your in their portfolios but more specifically try to find alumni see see what the level is before so that you don't you don't waste uh, you don't waste your time maybe they Maybe they only accept people that could be working in the industry in the industry already, or maybe maybe their bar is very low, or maybe it's maybe it's medium. Just so that you just so that you know. If you want to do this, you know, if you want to do if you want to draw portraits, not that portraits are off limits. It's just there's no design elements here. You know, it's just illustration. It's just you taking somebody that exists maybe from reference and then recreating her and trying to maintain the emotions the essence the all the stuff that's, that's relevant for illustration not so much design if you wanted to do this then just go design heavy on her so uh, give her an armor give her maybe maybe she's a cyborg so maybe like part of her face like maybe she's a, that's like a mask here maybe there's like a cut uh maybe the nose is like a er, maybe you can swap it out with a different nose <laughs> if you feel like it now have a new nose for today maybe it's like, like pointy nose uh and you can have like all those prosthetics here the different ones that she's got maybe maybe that nose is, is a different color maybe it's got like a little trim here and that's like a really expensive one like designer nose maybe it's got like weird patterns um maybe part of her maybe she's got like crazy earrings or maybe she doesn't she, she doesn't even have ears maybe instead it's like a some sort of device with like holes and some some sensors in it maybe like some vents she looks like she looks like freezer now uh, yeah and then maybe she's got like a, a cool cool tech hoodie with a bunch of bunch of cables that do something maybe like transparent bits um or you turn her into like a medieval character with like a like a witch's hat and Maybe she's got like a, yeah, maybe she's like a wizard or something. So now instead of just a regular shirt, she's gonna wear like a big wizard robe. Robe with uh, some cool, some cool trinkets, like some nice earrings, super intricate stuff. Like you can do a lot with this. Just focus on design, stuff that conveys ideas. Sorry, I butchered your character. Let's go back in time. 
Ah. Mm -hmm. There we go. All right, moving on to Kevin. What's up, Kevin? So I tried focusing on perspective one and made some shapes, and I also created the basic layout for a castle building. Also did some heads from um, term two. I also kept a drawing, the mannequin as well. How are these? Ooh, woo, 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 woo. Let's see, let's see. Very nice, very nice, very nicely constructed. Nice and clean. No a problem here. All right, you got some quick poses here. And uh... yeah, these look pretty damn good. Yeah, all great proportions. Uh, most most features will look good on here. I would do that next. You know, uh, start to start to draw these super simple um, facial features, just so that you get used to to seeing them on the face in different angles. <laughs> Said that a few times today, but um, yeah, that's kind of like a really good step forward. It's it's more fun because you get to draw actual people instead of just something that's more abstract. Uh, but you can do that really well already. So I mean, these are some nice nice heads. Proportion wise, very nice. Yeah, start to start to have some fun different angles here. Uh, side what that would look like. Really good exercise, man. Uh, Yeah, these characters look great. Just a bunch of cylinders. That's it. Just a bunch of cylinders. But uh, but somehow our brain tells us that no, 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 it's not just cylinders. It's an actual person jumping. Mm -hmm. Fooling my brain. Good job. Um, maybe this one here, like um, I don't know, if it was if it was based of a of a photo, maybe like in in the angle that it was at, that was correct. I was gonna say that maybe the legs are a little short. Looks more like a like a young, not a young kid, but like an older kid maybe, because of those proportions. Let's try to just uh, make these bigger. Taller, uh, but no, it looks good. Other than other than that, uh, your cylinders are all nice. They all look cylindrical. They all convey the right direction for those limbs. Uh, really good exercise, Kevin. Easy feedback. Yeah, like these are, they're so good, you know, that you can start to close the shapes, start to turn them, turn, turn them more into humans. So like close all of that here and you can connect all the dots, give them a crotch, connect the knees here. And uh, now you got like a little person. Boom. Because you did all the hard work already. So now might as well get the reward. 
can get a finished drawing out of this. Not not finished finished, but you know, something that looks more like a yeah. Like a real person. Very nice. Very nice sketches. Um And for for when it comes to perspective, yeah, I don't know how much of a struggle this was, how easy that was for you, uh, but you make you make it look easy, so I would uh, I would go for something that's a little bit more ambitious. If you if you feel like it, if you hate perspective, then then don't. But uh, but if you're ready for more, I think you can definitely handle it. Like a full room, or like a just like a, a corner of a corner of a street, or just like a, an item, you know, just a, a prop or something. But a complex prop in 3D. Very very good. Moving on to Laura. Um, so I tried to implement the changes you suggested on last week's stream. I added more lights to the background and changed the framing. I think it looks much more alive now. Mm-hmm. That looks good. That looks very good. Yeah, that framing works, yeah. Nice balance now, very nice. Oh, super cool, Laura. Um, I think if it were me, I would I would still push the the backlight just a little bit more. Um, also, kind of keep it the same color. Like I don't mind like the. Uh, uh, I think it's cool that you have a bunch of different colors back here, but but overall, like the color of the background should be overall more or less the same. So like one color should be dominant. So so yeah, kind of like this. You know what you did here, but I would just do that. You know that amount because I think that's good. I think that reads real nice. I would do that everywhere around him. So like in here also. So his arm. Uh, back here. I mean, I think I did the same thing last week, but. But I think I would just do more of it, a little bit more of it. So that when you look at the image, you know, at a uh, just a glance, you see kind of the the dominance of the color. So it's it's a uh, less of a rainbow and more of a more like all right. So this is blue or purple dominant, and then you have a bunch of other colors that that kind of complement that. But uh, but overall, from a thumbnail size. Uh, and always look at it from that size here. If it looks good at that at that size, usually it's a really good sign. So now you kind of get you know like this silhouette in the center, and with like a like splash of a uh, splash of purple. And then you zoom in and then you can kind of see like all the different colors. Ah, I see, I see. There's more to it than just the purple. I mean, it could be any any color, to be honest. You don't need to go this far and you don't even need to do any of this. <laughs> just personally, that's what I would do. But um, it's mostly so that it stands out as a thumbnail. Because, you know, when you're scrolling on like on Instagram or it goes pretty quick, so Unless there's something that's that's poppy, that's catchy, eye-catching about it. Usually bold colors will do that, will help to do that. Yeah, and then from here, you know. If you if you feel bored one day and you want to add more details to this, maybe just a little more a little more shadow here on the cape where there's no light directly kind of touching it. Maybe that part of the cave can be a little darker. Mm. And then 
maybe get more of it, like this, this rim lights around around the character, maybe like the, the, the lights in the streets are very bright and so kind of highlighting the silhouette of the character even more. Almost like yeah, there's a car behind him, you know, like shooting the headlights at him. I don't think it's necessarily needed, especially uh, if the background's a little lighter overall. But uh, yeah, that's come a long way, and I think he did awesome. Whether you change it or not. One thing that, that I used to like, that I used to do a lot, um, is kind of changing the this stuff, but overall. Where did it go? go. Okay, changing the colors overall with this. To kind of give it some, some mood up. Maybe like you can do that for the background as a whole. And then the character, you you know, maybe the character's on a separate layer. And the character doesn't get that, that treatment. I'm just just trying things. I have no idea if this is going to work. But, but sometimes that's, that's like a cool, cool thing that you can do. And it gives you nice results right away. For free. For very little, very little work. Hmm. Maybe that's too much. Yeah, something to try. Color balance. Always nice. Um, later, Vika. Thanks for hanging. <clears throat> Have a good rest of your weekend. And um, I'm the health, Laura. Very nice. I, uh, you should be proud of this one. Moving on to Hana. So this week, I've been working on thumbnails for the comic, but they're not really stream worthy at the moment so i'll show them next week all right all right liv and i made a height and proportion chart to compare and have a reference of our characters relative to one another we made it a we made it in drop what what's that droply oh i didn't know that existed i'll look it up droply Droply, droplie, droply. <clears throat> ah, cool. So, um, you spoke in a recent YouTube arts, uh, art school vid about shifting the body fat, muscles, mass, and proportions on characters to create different body types. The elf characters, we have chosen to give them a smaller torso and longer legs to make them look extra slender and elegant. Male elves also typically look a little more android than male humans. I understand what that word is. I just don't want to try to say it, because I'll ruin it. Uh, if we give uh, we give Lawrence a bit of a bulkier bit build, uh, bulkier bud, while still keeping him fairly thin. Danica is supposed to be a bit athletic. Clarissa is supposed to be a little bit more curvy, and Vivi is supposed to be a little more petite and delicate. Is this reading well? Any suggestions? We're both not totally confident with anatomy, so knowing that they are on the right track would be great. All right. Oh, drop pile. Oh. Drop pile. It's a weird name. It's like a pile of drawing. A draw pile. Yeah, bro. That's the, that's the name of the that's the name of the business. Let's go with that. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Man, they used to have that back in the days when I was small. <laughs> when I was young. I thought that completely died, but there it is. Ha! Huh, nice. Alright, thanks for that. Thanks for that link. Not that link, but thanks for the, the correction review. 
This is a an elf, right? The big. Uh, uh, uh. So for this one here, mm, like to give the the appearance the appearance of somebody being like tall and slender. Um, like you'll see that with a lot of models too, like they, they have like really, really wide shoulders, but they're super skinny though. So like he gives and like really tall neck to a long neck. Um, those proportions are they're pretty aesthetic, you know, it looks, it looks kind of good usually. And it almost always looks like a tall slender person. So I would recommend that maybe for this guy here. So like, I don't know how much, like how much different you want them to be. How you know it's supposed to be a completely different race, or so just just slightly different, but and then maybe even longer, slightly longer on that. Like now it looks it looks pretty different. You know, that's not a human. Everything still works, you know, it's still just just gotta stretch things out a bit, but but other than that, no not too different. So yeah, I just don't know how much, like how far you wanna push it. But if it's a different race. Maybe that'd be cool. Otherwise, like I feel it looks maybe too more too much like this guy, like a uh, like Professor Lawrence, but maybe just a little taller. And you could like narrow his uh, like narrow the his body, like maybe not that much, maybe a little bit less than that. And then on top of that, like you kind of narrow the waist, not the waist, but the entire torso. A bit more. Now the arm is way too far, but, but uh, well, maybe they have narrow, narrower torso. See what that, what that impacts, how that impacts the rest. I know, just random ideas. Um, maybe his mom. Hmm. Open canvas, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's that sounds familiar. Um, but like yeah, so anyways, like to just answer your overall question, these look great. These look really really good. Um Like between, uh, it's more like it's more in the differences. Like how much you want to push the difference between between all of them. Uh, like these three, they look pretty close. There's not a whole lot of difference. Um, like one thing that you can do to make them feel more, like maybe just a little bit, a little bit, uh, a little fatter, would be to just remove details. You know, like you have a lot of these uh, these like muscle like anatomy. You know, anatomy hits. Not hits, hints left and right, a little, little clues. Uh, but somebody that's that's a little fatter wouldn't have any of that. It would just be kind of just soft all around. Maybe 
here a little rounded. Less features essentially. And somebody that's slender, then yeah, you would see more of the, the ribs, that kind of stuff. Deeper abs. Maybe the belly button orientation, slightly different, suggests there's a little, little bit of a belly there. You know, if it's nice and straight like this, and like it stretch almost, suggests that yeah, somebody's very, very lean. Um, You know, a lot of it will be in the upper arms. And like a softer slope here, going to the, to the arm. Like maybe I'm turning her into like some, somebody who's too fat. Uh, But you know, now you look at these two, it's a little more of a difference, you know, like a little rounder, not big difference, but a little more. Stomach less defined clearly, like they're not on the same diet. Don't, they don't have the same lifestyle. Um, so it'd be like those, those small things like that. And like the legs, the legs also would be a lot, a lot bigger. You know, like your, uh, the, uh, the, the crush would look different. The lines would be a slightly different angle. So. Since there's more more mass here, like you, it'll be a little um, a little a little less tall, in a way, like tall tall this way. Like the V will be less tall. <laughs> Does that make sense? Like this is a flat V, right? This is a sharp V. This is V V. Um, yeah, so it'd be those those small things, you know, like the top of the legs here. Uh, and like no definition for the hips whatsoever. If, if you're if, if you have a little if you carry a little more fat, um, so it's gonna be instead just like a nice just round curve, like feature less. Um, belly button plays a big part. This seems silly, but uh, just the direction of the belly button and the the like how stretched it is and which direction that indicates a lot. You know, without you having to draw to draw like belly hanging or anything like that. Um, and the arms also gonna be on a big big obvious place where. Uh, where just anybody, kids included, will will put on weight, yeah, and that usually affects the slope of the shoulder. So, like the shoulder is the same. It's more that you know instead of curving down here and then straight into into the arm, it continues a little longer. So it's like that difference. And now it feels like the slope is different. Essentially, it's the same. It's just now you have a little extra buffer. It's rounded in the other direction. Yeah, I don't want to push it too much. Like you say, you know, I don't want her to make a, don't want to make, to make her double the weight that she used to, to be. But those small things play a big, big role, I think. And I, and for kids, especially like uh, skinny legs, you know, uh, you can go way skinny. For like boys, for example, you know, if you have like a boy of that age around 12 or something or 10 or whatever, uh, they're not gonna get a whole lot of definition in their legs. It's gonna be mostly just sticks and a good a good amount of gap in between the legs. But yeah, um, I would do the same thing with her. You know, she seems a little, a little more uh, uh, maybe hunched over like this. So longer neck. You know, it's always elegant. <laughs> That's why so many cultures try to have longer necks. I guess there's something to it. That's why a lot of models have long necks. It's just... And for elves also, they're meant to be tall and slender, you know, like her shoulder could go a little, a little further out. With the taller neck, it wouldn't be too big of a problem. And then she, I mean, she still looks like a woman. So yeah, I don't want to push too much. Uh, I mean, it's already, it's, it looks awesome. Um, so cool to see these side to side now. But since you mentioned she wanted to push them some more. Mm -hmm. That helps guys. Is 
her way to make Danica look muscularly and athletic without having so many muscle lines all over her. Uh, yeah, that's that's a little overkill. You're right. Um, that would be the easier easier way to to, to do that would be in the thickness of the legs. Um, so like that's a good amount of muscle, you know, on on any kid. That's that's those are pretty big legs. So maybe just have more of a gap in between her legs. But she's a little little skinnier. You wouldn't really see it from this angle, but they're already reducing a little bit of thickness here. Athletic, you say? Lean. Um, Yeah, like the the bare minimum would be. I mean, seeing seeing the ribs here, that's that's a big indication. Although, like when they're when they're they're fully clothed, you won't you won't see that. So, mm, other than the other than her legs being very very skinny, their arms also could be very skinny. I mean, it's gonna it's gonna be similar to what I said with them, you know, like a longer neck. Because right now she's got, she, they they all have like pretty short necks. Actually, like all of these could probably have slightly longer necks. Um, but longer neck and like wider shoulders. <clears throat> we'll move on. Uh, how you could improve these? I mean, this looks like a. Like those shading balls that you would find in a in a 3D software. So you did a really good job. Like this one, that one too. Like this just matte sphere. That's just like a a blend, you know, like blend material. Maybe you could you could soften the, the transition here to uh to the dark side. Oops. Cause it is pretty abrupt. Like a little a little more of a transition here would help. Make that feel more more round. But uh, yeah, man, this looks good. This looks really good. Even like the, the little bit of dark around the light source here, around the around the specular. Mm -hmm. Nice touch. Yeah, those two are really good. What the hell? Come on! Jesus. These two. Got it. Very nice. Very very nice. Um, those two here, I think it's just. I think the um, yeah, just the shading is not as soft. Let's fix that. Mm. Oops. Just have that be a little bit more. into the shape a little bit more. Mm. I think I did too much. What was it before? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, something like that, I think. Already would uh, would work a little better. Because when when the transition is a little too hard, a little too harsh, it makes it feel more like an like an edge, and uh, yeah, like we don't want that. So same here, you know, transition just a little too rough, just blending it a little better. It's nice and continuous curve. This one here may be a little bit more shadow than there. Opposite side of the light source.
But, uh, but yeah, overall, man, these look, these look really good. These two, a little weaker compared to, uh, to, to those two excellent ones. Uh, your cube looks good. Looks like a cube to me. Maybe you can have a little bit more, a little bit more light towards the bottom here. Where the light bounces. But, um, but yeah. Nice balls, bro. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Nathan. Um, just practice some more faces and figure drawings again. Um, I would mainly like to get feedback on the face bases as I feel that this is my biggest struggle at the moment. Um, if there's anything else, or if there's anything that I can improve about the gesture ones, also definitely let me know. Right on, Nathan. Let's take a look at these first. Whoa. Ooh, those are good. Look at this. Oh, nicely constructed too. Mm -mm. Yummy, yummy. Oh, very nice. Very nice. I'm a fan of those. Yeah, that guy about to take a swing. Hell yeah. Sick. That guy too is just a subtle kind of just back pose but it works so well yeah very nice constructions great proportions uh, this one may be a little stumpy but it's about the only one it doesn't have enough waist just gonna extend that a bit there we go now he can sit. <laughs> Very good, these. Very good. Messy, but I like how you like you reinforce the uh, the contour lines here. As you know, the result is that it looks it looks pretty damn clean. When well, that's that's all that you can notice at first glance. Maybe you could even punch these out some more. But yeah, very good. Very very good. Um, These guys here, uh, nice shading on this guy. It's like a, it's like a very, what does this make me think of? What does this thing make me think of? Um, It's weird because like the shading is really good. The shading is really really good on here, but the structure of the face is just a little bit off. It's almost like a little cartoony, but with very realistic shading. Um, but just a little bit cartoony, so it's it's kind of a, right in the. What? Why is that? I think maybe it's just the eyes. I don't know. Let's try. Let's try to move the eyes down a bit. They're more centered. Yeah, and he's got he's got big eyes too, like for the size of his face. I mean, that, not that it's a problem; it's just a, just an observation. It makes him look that I think that that helps make him look cartoony, a little bit more cartoony. Very piercing eyes. I feel judged. Um. <clears throat> Yeah, from this angle, maybe you'll be able to see a little bit of lights here on that cheek too. Because um, I, th I think maybe his face feels a little flat. Like overall, I think the the shading of all the facial features, like the medium-sized details and the smaller details are really good. Uh, but I think it's the big details, like the the big overall volumes of the head and, and the neck and how those two are connected. I think that feels maybe a little flatter. So I bring up the cheek here. I'm going to get a little bit more of that, that 3D. And the nose here blocking some of the lights. But that's why it starts a little further back. Uh, maybe highlighting the chin here because he's he's chinless, otherwise not chinless, but you know there's there's something under the lip. It's not a straight line all the way down. So having some hints of that here. Um the upper lip probably gets a little bit less light. You know, if you look at mine right now, 
this one's scratching a lot of light. <laughs> the upper lip, not as much, because it's facing in the opposite direction. Uh, corner of the mouth, maybe. It's not, like, yeah, it's, uh, what makes it, what's, it, what makes him feel cartoony to me, at least, is that he's missing a lot of those, those small, uh, like, realistic bits, you know, hints, uh, hits of highlights. Like here, the corner of the mouth, you know, it's always going to be a little darker. It's very small stuff, but when you remove them, it looks a little more cartoony. Side of the nostrils here, you can go a little darker, make his nose feel a bit longer. That nostril probably won't see as much of it though. Be uh, hidden behind the other one, behind the tip of the nose. Maybe a little more shadow here. That thing here. And then um so yeah, the position of his face on on the neck. A little too a little too too be this way. Uh so we'll just want to offset maybe the make the neck a little smaller. Maybe we could just shave up part of it here on the inside. That just about does it. And then, just like uh, I was showing earlier, but let's say you have a cylinder, which is the neck. Cylinder here and a ball on top. The shading, you know, the logic of the shading is that the neck here will be brighter and whatever, like whatever surface is going away from us, gonna be a little darker. And so, yeah, the underside of his chin here, definitely darker, like you did. Uh, but we'll just want to add also the, the larynx, kind of going into... Make an indication for that. And then the neck also, just like the side of the cheek here, gets darker. The neck also is kind of going away from us, so it should get a little darker as well. Still got a, it's still, it's still got a pretty thick neck, but it feels a bit better. So anyways, we'll stop here. Take a look at the rest real quick. Well, we'll see just those, those small adjustments, what that did. If it did anything. <laughs> I think most, like, the biggest one was the eyes. One of those was a little too high. Yeah, anyways, the house. Um, just a little, just a little, just a few tweaks, and then you know that looks a lot more realistic, a lot less cartoony. So yeah, you definitely have more of an issue with um, with faces. N not a problem. That was my case for the longest time too. Um, so I kind of kind of see myself here. Um, your construction is pretty good. I would like to see you try um, simpler simpler faces, just to see what that looks like. Because I'm not sure if it's the like the complexity of the facial features like that on top of placing them in perspective that's 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 uh, that looks a little bit off or if it's just uh, the position them so like i want to understand where 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 it's not working in your process it's more of a process thing i think um because let's take a look at just this face here. Let's see, I erase it. 
Uh, might have to do with the the shape of the face. Like this one works better, I think, just because you're you're sticking a lot more to the the construction. Like it feels it feels more solid. This one here feels like he's got like this this big weird like weirdly round jaw. I think if you just ch chisel that a bit more, highlight it, reinforce his um, his eye socket here from the side. And then position facial features on here. Yeah, that looks, that looks pretty good already. And um, yeah, this also is quite long. So one thing to keep in mind, you know, when, when drawing the jaw, something to, yeah, something to remember. Uh, it's always a little shorter than it is long, but it is, it's pretty damn close. You know, like a, it stops right here at the, um, uh, right at the uh, ear hole. <laughs> elegant way to say it um, so it's that distance and then that distance it's a little always a little deeper um, this way and it is tall but not that much you know it's not gonna be like two-thirds versus one-third it's, it's almost the same just slightly longer um, and so yeah look while well, doing this here this one is quite long compared to how tall it is that's one thing that's contributing to making this guy Guys, the space structure be a little, a little off. If we adjust that, all of a sudden it looks pretty good, nice and strong face. There we go. So this one here too, um, a lot of it has to do with the, the contour of his face. So let's try to just fix that, see if that helps or more. How much that helps? Feels a lot better already, right? I think it's mostly the contour of the face, the issue, um, and then a little bit of the, a little bit the perspective of uh, of the eyes sometimes. Uh, so, but let's say try to just move what you have here. You push the nose out a bit. So it looks a little longer. Move the mouth forward. Maybe rotate it so that. In the right angle here. Reposition that eye a bit, a little bit lower. And that one too. Ah, you start to. Yeah, there we go. That's a lot more proportionate. And so, yeah, it's small stuff. Mostly the contour of the face. So be careful of that. I think the the contour of that head plays a huge part in, in your character's looking a little deformed. Um, yeah, and then after that, it's just, like, just minor, like, uh, moving stuff around, moving the facial features around just a little bit, and, uh, and you end up with a face that looks pretty damn solid here. So, so that's encouraging. I think we found it. We found the issue. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hulk Hogan? Where? Oh, this guy. <laughs> there you go. There we go. Nice style. Oh, brother. Yeah, hope that helps, Nathan. And then there was one James. James saved for last. So I, I hope you are doing well, and I got plenty, and got plenty of, of rest from last week's submission. Yeah, although, 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 like I'll, I'll say it again, like I, I thought, you know, like these, these streams, the longer they get, the, the more of a, like the longer of a work day that would become, but 
I, I I'm I'm seeing myself level up too by just correcting you guys as you guys as uh, not correcting but just by by giving feedback like trying to because I'm forced all I'm doing all day is observe right so observe what's what I think is wrong what I think should be right and then sometimes we pull up we pull up references and then I get to confirm or or or, or correct what I thought and like this process has been very beneficial to me as an artist too so I that's how I take it you know it's a uh, it's really good practice all day long. And so, hell yeah. I don't mind that. And then it, it gives me ideas for new for new YouTube videos. You know, sometimes I see things that are that keep coming back, you know, that uh, that you guys are struggling with or or questions that keep coming back. So, it's like, hmm, maybe I'll make a video out of that. So, it's all good. I love it. Uh <clears throat> maybe my body doesn't like doesn't like to sit down for so long, but uh, but that's that's my problem. I just gotta work out a little more. Um, so yeah. Uh, 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 uh. So I took what you said and tried again, but with multiple angles. And my gosh, did it help? It made me see each of the dimensions that I couldn't before. Man, I. different yo man look at just this one here i mean all of them but th i think this one is just because this one is it has a subtle face what, what's the guy what, i don't know i forgot this name but uh it's like it's this thing here and how far in like the mouth goes and it's very specific to his face and yeah you nailed it with this oh those are good those are really good um so again, it was, I guess what made it so hard before was the nose uh, and the eyes. I forgot that the eyes were in sockets and the nose protrudes. <laughs> um, you know, like I said, I like I said before to uh, uh, to Nathan, I I used to suck at, fa at faces. You know, all the time I was working at Blizzard, I was always a little a little insecure with my faces. Now that I look back at all my my designs that I did, you know, back in the days, while I was still a professional. <laughs> You know, making really good money working for one of the biggest studio in in, uh, in games. I was like, my heads were not as good as yours, and so it was always. It doesn't take long. You know, it's just one a couple of things here that you need to that needs to click, and then you're like, oh, there you go. That's what it is, and then and then it starts to work, and it's not not as big of a of, a, of an issue anymore. And you're like, why was that a problem? Why was that ever a problem? So I'm, I'm super stoked that uh, that a couple of things are starting to click. Um, so uh, I'm just excited I got over this anatomical slump and that has been uh, that I've, I've been in since the beginning of my studies. Uh, awesome, awesome, awesome. So finally, to my question: um, Do I need to improve on anything? The anatomy, the facial structures, or even uh, the facial structure, or even the expression? Also, is it possible to mimic or copy an artist's style? If there is, where do I start? As much as I like perfect anatomy, I don't really like making hyper-realistic artwork. Yes, um, but that's awesome to have as a base, you know, because you know you can do it. You know, you got the tools to do it. Um, and that's that's the most important. So, you know, if you started right away in, uh, and all you did was like style as work, um, there would always be this, 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 uh, this question like can you do it can do you really know anatomy or is it just what 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 you're doing is it just a bunch of recipes that you took from a bunch of other artists that you're really good at applying but but without the solid fundamentals and it'll always always be like mm, he's gonna he's gonna mess it up at some point that recipe is not gonna apply as well as he thinks or maybe there's something that you're just not gonna notice because you don't have that fundamental knowledge but uh but you do so that's good very good and that <laughs> Yo, night and day. Night and day. I mean, your line quality is still as, as solid, but the structure of the face is completely different. Completely different. Uh, man, these are good sketches. Um, so possible to mimic or copy an artist's style? Yeah, of course, that is totally possible. You know, like most... Um, 
I'll bring up like game artists again, but uh, when you join like a when you join a team, uh, a studio, you know, in, in films or in games or whatever, uh, usually you don't keep your style. You have to adapt to the style of the game, and so that becomes kind of just yeah, it's a thing that you do. It's almost like you change, you know, into your your different outfit to go to work. It's kind of like that for style, and and you'll see it gets a lot easier with uh, with time, and eventually you'll be able to to copy any style. It's just it's really just you'll have all the tools that you that you need for it, like all the really strong fundamentals that you need. And then it's just a matter of all right, picking that, this, 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 and then you combine that and then it ends up being the style. But if you if you have access to all of those, that's that's not a problem. You just need to know which, you know, what the other artist what the other artist did, what they chose, where where they where they made certain decisions, and you just gotta do the same thing. And you should be able to achieve nearly an identical style. So Style is really not a really not a big thing, you know. Especially when you start working in studios and you realize, oh yeah, adapting my styles, it's not it's not that hard. Because by the time you know you should have decent enough fundamentals, anyways. So I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, where do you start um, to mimic other people's style? I mean, honestly, I don't think you're gonna have much trouble doing that if you can mimic reality so well. So that's why it's good to do this first. Because uh, that's just how good you can observe. And clearly you can observe really, really well. So I would find, yeah, a bunch of artists that you like and uh, a bunch of them. And then see where, what decisions they made for certain parts of the body. Like, uh, like the nose, for example, how you treat a nose in different angles. Um, like sure, you could draw like, could draw the the contour, what's the contour of the nostril, and then draw like the 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 the, the, the uh, what's the word? What's the word? What's the word? Uh, the na 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 na. <laughs> uh, damn it, that cartilage. Anyways, as it goes into the tip, and like super anatomy anatomy focused, right? So all right, and then you have the that thing here split in half and then the nasal bone here and it continues anyway so you can you could approach it this way um that's kind of what you start from initially when you start to when you start to learn this kind of stuff and then and then it, and then uh, it'll be a matter of looking at how other artists treat that to give it a an aesthetic that you like that you're that you prefer so um you know it could be just that's a nostril and that's the tip of the nose. That's it. Maybe a little, little shading here, a little shading up there, and then there you go. You have your nose, two eyes. Hey. Um, and so yeah, it's just that. It's a it's a different recipe. You know, like I chose to keep that line. I chose to get rid of this, get rid of that, get rid of the inside, get rid of the contour of the nostril here. Got rid of all of that structure. Don't need that. Get out of here. And uh, I'm left with, with that pretty much. And then I just stylized it so that's a little pointier. There you go, that's a nose. And so that's that's what you need to to observe in other artists, like what, what they chose to keep, what they chose to get rid of, how they might have stylized some things, like the ears is another good example. So many ways that you can stylize an ear, you know, like super cartoony, which is uh, something like this, you know. Uh, it could also be something a little bit more a bit more detailed, but still pretty cartoony. Like an elf here or whatever. That's pretty cartoony. Uh, or it could be more realistic with, you know, the right size for everything and... And it's just what you keep from here, like what you decide to keep from something that might look a little more realistic, like something like that, to go from here, which one you prefer. and what you need to keep if that's what you prefer what you need to keep if that's what you prefer every artist makes different decision a lot of artists just copy each other uh like i've all my decisions that i make here not all of them but the majority the majority of them are are things that i've noticed that other artists do and i'm like oh yeah i kind of like that it's good good decision i'll do that from now on and it's just a little piece there but maybe the, the way that they treated the nostril some artists i liked it i'm like i'm gonna keep that from now on that's how I treat my nostrils now. 
And then maybe another artist has spotted something else like, oh yeah, it's nice how you treat the like the tip of the nose. Maybe maybe you always give it like a little a little um a little something more. And maybe it's always uh maybe you always have like these lines here, you know, to make it to make it feel like it's always a little a little curvier than it is. Uh, maybe I like that, and maybe I do that from now on. And so it's all those those small decisions. But that's essentially what makes somebody style. So like the, the, the collection of all those small decisions and that's what you like that's those those are all your preferences and then that turns out to be your style so yeah it's almost just a catalog you know you're like oh i like that yeah i'll do that um oh yeah i like that too as long as you have the catalog which you do clearly because you can draw realistic heads there you go what the hell james um and uh, let's, uh, let's stop right here. So we're <laughs> almost at eight hours. Ah. So I hope, uh, hope that was helpful, guys. Um, thank you so much if you if you hung out for, for a little bit or for, for the whole thing. I appreciate the company. I hope you're going to have a good rest of your weekend. Good creative week ahead of time. If you're still watching and you're on YouTube, Excuse me, and you want to know how to also get your art reviewed like this and you didn't see the intro for some reason Look down in the description below and you'll find a link to the art school program and that's what you that's what you should uh, Consider if you want your art reviewed like this Every week for an entire year. So I hope Like I said that helped even if you didn't submit your stuff. Maybe uh, some of that applies to you too Hopefully that's the goal So uh, That's it for me. I'm gonna go have dinner and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.